Hi everybody, I'm Dorothy the Organizer from Hoarders, of course. Are you ready for a Hoarders Marathon? We've put together some of the top Hoarders episodes and I'll be joining you throughout those episodes to give you organizing tips. Why? Because so many of our fans tell us they feel inspired to get organized after they watch a show. So I hope I can give you some inspiration and I hope you enjoy the show. It's inconvenient, it's not a hazard. How are you showering? <laughs> I'm horrified. I want you to see your refrigerator. Everything's covered in pee and poop. Oh, God! I'm done. It's over. This is my home. This has been my home all my life. I misplace a lot of things. Glenn has a thing with bags. It's like a drug. He's getting ready to have a panic attack. A newspaper from 1991. This behavior is self-abuse. I'm Sandy, and I love books. Books have always been my escape. They don't judge you. They take us to places no one's ever been. I use books to escape reality, and while that can be kind of a therapy, it also doesn't get things done. I'm Nona, and Sandy is my sister. Sandy is a hoarder. She's always had problems throwing things away, letting them build up, just not being able to let go of stuff that she should. I don't think I'm a hoarder. I just go out and buy stuff and then don't have any place to put it. I'm Jen and Sandy is my aunt. When I went into the kitchen about a month ago, it was completely full of trash and junk. The refrigerator broke. So I have to get ice and put it in there to keep the stuff cold. Things started accumulating in the bathtub. So I don't take baths and showers here anymore. Now it's sponge baths. Code enforcement from the town called me. Because I'm legally responsible for the home and they'd had a complaint that the house was getting pretty run down. Wanted to know the condition. And I said, I really don't know. I haven't been in it in a couple of years. And I went over. I wanted to talk to her about it. And I'm banging on the door. The door's locked. She says, I'll come right out. And when she did, she opened the door and took a real quick two steps so I couldn't get in. And she held the door shut so I wouldn't see. But I'd seen it. It was a problem. She can't sleep. She can't eat properly. She can't cook. She can't walk through there. She can't sit in a chair. I'm just afraid the whole house is going to cave in. The house is solid. It's inconvenient. It's not a hazard. As a child growing up, my mom threw everything away. It's like everybody else normally, you know, you only keep this so long and then you throw it out. Sandy took it more personal. She'd tuck books in certain corners where she didn't think my mother would see them so she could read them again. Mother never really respected our privacy. She would go into my room and take stuff that she considered junk and throw it away. It just hurt that she would think so little of my feelings. My 
mother's first stroke was in February of 82. It was her birthday, and I moved in to help take care of her. I tried to keep Mama happy. Uh, I did what housekeeping I could, but she was constantly criticizing it, and it got to be an awful strain. I think my mom's death could have released her from any restraint she had. I live here, this is my home, and I can buy this. I don't have to get rid of this now. It just got worse and worse. After Mother died, it really escalated. I couldn't seem to get up the energy or the motivation to clean. My mother told me a long time ago she wanted my name on the deed because my sister has maxed out every credit card she ever had. She was afraid that if they were to come after her, they'd take the house it was in Sandy's name. I had expected to have my own home, and now I've got tenancy. I'm a tenant in my own home. It's breaking my heart to have that house in that condition. I want my grandkids to go over there and enjoy the house the way we all did. Have a piece of what we all had. If she doesn't clean it up, I'll be forced to remove her from the home. She has no choice. She has to clean up now, or she won't have a place to live. My name is Lynn. I'm a retired steel worker. And, uh, yes, I'm a hoarder. Someone coming in for the first time and seeing that house, they would really flip out. It's complete clutter. I'm Gay Nell, and I'm Lynn Scott's sister. It is not easy to walk through Lynn's house. When you walk through it, you have to walk sideways. Lynn has a thing with bags. A lot of these bags like, yeah, have different colors on them. I like stuff like that, multicolors, bags. I believe Lynn has about a thousand trash bags in the house, and they're the big contractor size trash bags. There's so many bags in the house because I put stuff in it to protect it, like my clothes and stuff I want to keep. Everything has to have a bag, and he could never find the bag that he put the things in. I misplace a lot of things I've been looking for. So I had to buy them again. Lynn's mom and aunt was in a fatal car crash when he was eight or nine years old. My mom was driving. She was with her sister. Both were killed. At eight or nine, you need your mom. After that, my father got sick and it told me he had cancer. When my dad passed, that's when I felt like I became a hoarder. There was really no mother, no father, no one to go to. And you just feel lonely. I feel lonely to this day. I'm Chavez and I'm Lynn's great niece. My family has adopted Lynn. We take care of him and help him out through his daily activities. We love him. He's a part of our family. Lynn comes over to my house three to four times out of the week for dinner because he really doesn't have anywhere to sit and eat a meal in his home. I really don't have any patience with Lynn in that hoarding anymore. If I don't get stuff right this time, I think she don't want to 
be around me anymore. But uh, I just don't know how to correct the problem. I had a heart attack. After I had my heart attack, I lost my job because uh, I really couldn't do the physical part no more. And, uh, and that's when my problems really began uh, with the house. I would get wind and shortness of breath. I'm very worried about his safety. If Lynn doesn't clean up, I've made up my mind that I will call the authorities. The last time I was in the home, it was over 10 years ago. I think she's been keeping this hoarder secret because she knows it's gonna piss me off. If she doesn't clean up, I'm gonna kick her out. Well, I already have a bad feeling because I'm looking in the window here and it's completely hoarded. I'm Dr. Robin Zazio. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, and I specialize in hoarding disorder and OCD. Hello. Sandy, hi. hi. Dr. Zazio. Thanks hi. for having me. I'm here with Nona, and we'd like to come in. OK, but uh, I'd rather not be with Nona when she does her first walkthrough. OK, and that's because? I really don't want to hear what you have to say. She probably is afraid that I'm going to punch the hell out of her. And I will. Please respect that, Nona. Yep. I'll be back in a little bit. All right. So, Sandy, I help people with hoarding disorder for a living. What's going on here? This isn't hoarding per se. I do clean stuff out. The garbage goes out regularly. There's nothing sitting around. OK. Well, let's continue with the tour so I can see yes. more about what's going on. OK. Looks like it's All a little right. bit of a maze. Um, a little bit. Oh, Sandy. I know. That's not safe to stand in. I mean, you've got black mold in there. That's really, really yes. dangerous. How are you showering? Well, I don't. I haven't had hot water for several years. You have no hot water? No. Hi. Hi. So I think it's best that you just go in and take a peek for yourself, and we'll talk when you come out. OK. How the hell can she live this way? The way she's living is atrocious. You can't walk, you can't step, you can't sleep. I'm horrified, I'm horrified. Oh my God. I used to sleep here. My father and my mother built this house. It was where I was born and it's ruined. It's totally ruined. I'm done. I'm done. Hello, I'm Lee. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you also. I'm Dr. Melva Green, a psychiatrist specializing in hoarding behaviors. So you are Lynn's... I'm like a nephew to Lynn. When was the last time you saw the house? It's been about 10 years for me. OK. OK. Well, let's go on in. Let's go see. OK. Me and Lynn spend a lot of time together. I normally see him every Sunday at Sunday dinner at my mom's house. Hi. How you doing? I'm Dr. Green. Glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. How you doing, Lee? How you doing, Lee? Come in and out the ring. Okay. 
Today I'm having a walkthrough to see the extent of the hoard. Oh my. This house is bags, 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 and more bags. I had no idea. What's happening for you, Lynn? You're looking kind of teary. Well, I'm not happy to let people come in, like Lee, you or anybody, to see this condition of the house. It's something I'm not proud of. I'm getting a little winded now with my health. It's clear that Lynn is very overwhelmed right now. He's looking like he's getting ready to have a panic attack. I'm watching you, you're getting really sweaty and really physically overwhelmed, and we've barely gotten started. I see, I'm not in the best shape, you know, my heart condition. This is heavy, I get it. Wow, <laughs> this is unreal. It's heartbreaking. I mean, that's no way to live for anyone. Yeah, Lee, I know you've been up here a while, so yeah, we finally made it. It's uh, safe for you up here, Lynn. You know, you have health problems, and if you need help, they'll have a hard time getting to you, so this has got to stop. This behavior has, is, is self-abuse. Well, I'm just hoping that uh... You understand I got how I got like this, and I didn't want to be like this. I just went over with. Well, it'd be a shame to people come to my house. This is a life and death situation for him with his health issues, and he's got a number of them cracking down with any level of tough love. That would just be a disaster. You can watch more Hoarders episodes every single Sunday this month at 7 a.m. on A&E. What do you want to say to your sister? You're not doing this to the house again. You're not going to do it to yourself. <laughs> Period. Yeah. I don't care what it takes. Nona owns the house, and Sandy is a tenant. If she doesn't get the place cleaned up, she's going to be booted out and on the streets. We don't want to see you homeless, and I know that you don't want to throw her out on the streets. Nope. OK, let's get started. Mm -hmm. OK. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm Matt Paxton. I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. Normally, we do a lot of lovey-dovey and hugging and goal-making, and I don't think that's really the style for this family. <laughs> All right, so I think we're just going to get working. Is that cool? Yep. yep. Let's do it. Okay. So bring a couple bags to transfer the stuff, but nothing is being trashed, okay. and we're just bringing it to them to make decisions on their own. Okay, keep, keep, okay, keep my Afghan books. I need this, that's the cleaning brushes day. These are wallpaper paste, you're not going to wallpaper. No, but I, I use them for sweeping up. She's keeping about 90% of the stuff. I don't think she is grasping that if she doesn't get this house in order, she's going to be living on the streets. Once we got under that first foot, we realized everything's covered in pee and poop. And doesn't even register with her. Look what we have here. Yes. We've got a box covered yes. in droppings. Mm -hmm. This is food. Yes, which was in the box to keep it clean. So you're going to eat this food? The food is clean. Food is not clean. 
she doesn't understand or she doesn't see that this is really dangerous. Sandy, mm -hmm. if you invited me over for dinner and I knew that you made me some soup in this box, I would be horrified. It's totally insane. It's totally insane trying to keep most cup of food. It's not just about getting rid of the stuff. It's about changing your thinking up here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Oh, God! Okay, oh. it's dead. It's dead. Oh, a dead mouse right there. Yeah. So that's oh. what's in your stuff, okay? Yes. This is a box of food with a fresh dead mouse in it, okay? Yes. This is real. I know. Yeah. What are you thinking right now? This is your I'm house. I'm thinking she's not getting rid of stuff. Keeping, I'm keeping, I'm keeping. You need to get rid of it. Cleanup has been very slow. It's the end of the day and just nothing is getting tossed. So I'm gonna bring Sandy and Nona in so they can actually see how much work we still have to do. I'm done, it's over. You can't live like this. You sit here and you're hem and hot. You got five rooms. Mm -hmm. They can take everything out. Everything. No questions, no nothing, no more. I had no idea Lynn was living the way he was. It's just horrible. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Doris. I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. This house is full of bags. I don't know how you did it. I've never seen this many bags in my life. Me either. <laughs> okay, let's go. We are taking all the bags from upstairs outside. And the family's looking at the bags and they're horrified. They want to know whether this is from the whole top floor or just one room. Guess what? Just one room. Lynn, are you sure you could fit this? I'm positive. Do we really need this shirt, Yeah, Lynn? I really need it. Why do you want to keep the games? Because someday I might find somebody I can play some games with them. They're, they're not even open. Because it got misplaced. Right. Stuff like this is still good. I'm going to keep these dictionaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what you going to do with that? Don't worry about it. I said a lot of stuff I'm keeping, I'm going to try well, to. Well, they. You know, you supposed to be doing something? The family's sorting together, but Gaynell is having a really hard time. Hey there. Hi there, Dr. Green. How's it going? He agitates me, and then I agitate him back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lynn and Gaynell, they're going to have to work together. They're family. OK, you two. I know you guys kind of rub up against each other, but this avoiding each other doesn't help the process. Well, I thought we were working together all right. She was on her half doing her thing, and I'm on mine. I mean, you've got to be able to communicate with each other, working beside one another. That's my towel. They're wrinkled right now, but the... Uh, oh, my goodness. I had a bunch of other ones over there. Well, they probably over there. I no, it was right by you. It was right there. Well, they probably... They don't see them. I see you guys are working together. Sort of, kind of. Lynn, downstairs, you have all brand new towels. I saw them. You pulled them out and showed me. Why do you want to keep those ratty tatty towels? Oh, because they're my towels and I, I use just, them. Okay. They're not, they look that way because they're wrinkled right now. Ratty tatty. Lynn, Gaynell has been real clear that if this is not sorted out, that she's going to call the authorities because she's concerned about you. You matter far more than those ratty-tatty towels. I'm getting very windy and I'm about ready to stop. Lynn doesn't really express himself verbally, but his body language says it all. He stops making eye contact and eventually he gets up. 
I'm out of here. Done with the procrastinating. I understand that she has a sickness, but she can't sit there and twiddle her thumb and go, keep, keep. It's over. Sandy, I really need you to let me make a sweeping decision. Do we have your permission? Waist down, Ugh. toss. Yes. Okay, waist down, goes. Part of the process to heal is to see the reality yes. of what's happened. I want you to see your refrigerator. I know. Oh, I didn't know it was like that. This I have got to go through. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? I want to see, this is maple syrup. And that's been covered, so. All right, time out. Do you What think... are you saying? Yeah. You want to keep that? I would like to have kept it if it was still usable. Why would you want to eat something out of there? I'm really worried at this point. I thought we were making some progress psychologically, but I'm not sure that's happening. So this is the reality of hoarding. This is what happens, and I wanted you to see the volume. I mean, look at this. Look how much poop that is. That's a lot of poop. All these cabinets have to come out. All the sink has to come out. You guys are gonna have to make real decisions. Do you wanna put money back into this? We don't have the money. Yeah. If they ain't fixable, they're gonna empty it. They're not gonna help do anything else because it's too far gone. Sandy, is there anything that you wanna say to Nona? I mean, she's pretty shaken up over this. Well, I'm pretty shaken up over it. You know what? I'm done, okay? Mm. We did this for you. We're doing this for yes. you. Trying to save the home. Yes. And all you got is, I'm shook up too. Well, you know what? You have to destroy the family home. Well, you know what? You didn't ever come and visit me in 10 years. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't come in here because of the condition it was in. Buy a place to live. You know, you all have to be able to tolerate uncomfortable emotions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, nothing changes. Lynn is just avoiding. He's not getting in touch with the emotional clean out that's really necessary for change to take place. Walking away is just another way of avoiding your situation. I'm not avoiding situations. I'm just saying I do the best I can do. Well, this is a bag with another bag inside. Yeah, all right, donate. All right, donation items. Like yard stuff, donate. The rest of this, I, I can donate. Hey, 
is just boxes and Box. boxes of just tape. VHS tape, yes. yeah. I think I actually found the VHS player. <laughs> A newspaper from 1991. <laughs> wow. This is something else, huh? When me and mom, Granny, tried to clean it a few years ago, like, we actually had this room cleared. Right. It really hurts my feelings, and I hope it don't happen again. This is not the first time this family has done this. They are kind of over the whole deal here. If Len doesn't clean this up, this time, they're done. They don't want to do any more. Who here has wanted to say something about doing all this cleanup again? Madam? All I really need from you is to take initiative. You have to learn to take care of yourself in your home. Shay, you've been shaking your head for two days. Because it's just unbelievable. So I feel like after tomorrow when we're finished, I'm washing my hands with it at this point. I need Len to get serious because this family is no longer going to come to the rescue and he needs to know that. We still have a half a living room to do. We still have a kitchen to do. We still have a dining room to do. We have half a day left. We have got to push. We need tough luck. I think everybody is stressed because really what we have now is just a, an empty, broken down house that's not usable. All right, so things are a little different now that we've seen the damage to the house. And you said, I'm probably just gonna have to sell the house. It's the only thing we can do. So financially, we can't fix it up. None of us have any money. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. We're hand to mouth. So what I need to do for you is different now. I know. Good. I'm sorry that it's turning out this way. I wasn't expecting this. It was going to be fixed, and it was going to be OK. And she could live here, and the house would be beautiful again. And now it's not going to be part of the family anymore. Thought it was doing a nice thing. But it ended up kicking us in the ass. Nona has asked us to ask you to look for another place to live because her plan is to sell the house. The reason she's not sitting here telling you is because she knows she'd have lost her temper and it would only hurt you. And she didn't want to do that to you. She said, I'll talk to her in a few minutes when I calm down. This is my home. This has been my home all my life. We are here to help you figure out what your options are. But none of them are going to allow you to bring all this stuff with you. This is the only home I have ever known, and I'm almost 65. I thought this was going to be my home for the rest of my life. I don't know what's going to happen after this. Well, listen, I want you to go into the living room as a group and see what we can do in there. Push hard. Let's go, Lynn. Mm -hmm. This land is just garbage here. Garbage. Trash that he haven't picked up. That's what it is. More trash bags. These should be illegal for Lynn to buy. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, here we have, have a love coach. seat. <laughs> What do you need your family to understand? It's like a drug. And at times it 
ease the pain of my loneliness. And you won't have to be lonely if you clean up behind yourself, but you haven't even put that new shower curtain up. I told you the hooks don't work on that one. I tried putting it up, but... I'm noticing, Lynn, that you don't like correction. I've been corrected and corrected and corrected. How many times have you been correct me? Lynn seems to be stonewalling. He just wants this process to be over. Been a long day. I'm just really tired. That's his way of coping. He don't want to focus in. It's not going to help him. What's the hardest part of this whole thing? See your family and friends making jokes about you and stuff. And, and when they say something about you? It hurts, but nothing I can do. He's holding it in. He's been abandoned. People have died. Relationships were gone. He's alone, and the stuff prevented him from being alone, and now he truly is. And that's the scariest part of all. We're just going to be really blunt and open about what's happened. The job has changed. We now are pretty much getting Sandy ready to move. We have about six hours to finish this house. You ready? Yep. All right, let's go. Sandy. Hi. Hi. I did a bunch of research. I have found information on Section 8 and government coupons that will help pay for your housing. So if you stay at a friend's house and focus on the information that I'm going to give you, that will increase your odds of getting housing well, sooner There's no later. way we're going to get to both bedrooms today. We're not and talking about that, Sandy. We're I was thinking if I stay here, I can be emptying it. I don't, don't mind staying here. I've been staying here for 64 yes, years, here's, here's and I'm not going to go through the floor. Here's the deal. It's not safe. I will call the authorities, and they will come in here. They will condemn the house. Okay. You'll be kicked out immediately. Your sister will be fined as the landlord. It gets really nasty really fast, and you basically both would lose the house. Usually, I try to keep hope going through the entire cleanup, but this house, I really needed to just get the honest truth out. And the reality is, Sandy can't live here anymore. It's just not safe. No, no, what do you want to see happen? I want to see her stay at a friend's house. I really would. Not to be mean, not to be, I don't want you in there. Sandy, would you call your friends and ask them? Yes. Okay. Let's do it now. Let's call the friends and see what options we have. Okay. I'd prefer to have a perfectly clean house that Sandy can move into and everything's great, but that's not hoarding. Sandy is gonna stay at a friend's house for a couple days. Thank God Sandy has real friends. This is a perfect example of how hoarding disorder doesn't just affect the person who's struggling with the condition, it affects the family members as well. I'm gonna sell my family home as a pile. But I feel better knowing that at least she'll be sleeping somewhere clean instead of sleeping here with rat in her bed. I know that Nona wants what's best for me, but my biggest regret when this place is sold is I won't be able to come here anymore. Losing your home is devastating, but I have good friends, they'll help me. What do you want to say to me? It's uh, overwhelming and uh, it's unbearable to see uh, all the stuff I have. I didn't realize it. I get it, honey. When's the last time you had a real hug? 
as friendly as Len is, you would think everybody's out hugging him, but in fact, nobody can really get to him because of the stuff. And we're breaking through, and it's really giving him some emotion. One more hug for the road. <laughs> Lynn has had a good start. He's getting in touch with the emotional clean out that's really necessary for change to take place. Hello, beautiful people. Hello, beautiful <laughs> people. We cleared out 2,700 bags from this house. We had small bags, cloth bags, bags with handles, you name it, we had them, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go. Let's go. Oh, wow. The family is completely stunned. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they have spent the whole time bickering, giggling, joking, and suddenly today, nothing. I never thought anything is shut my mouth, but this truly has. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn is still in a crisis, but not like he was. I'm not calling the authorities. Oh, wow. Lynn. Wow. I'm gonna have to take a seat on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make a weekly visit, unannounced. Hopefully that'll keep Lynn on his toes. How do you feel? Oh. oh, how does this feel? I feel like I'm finally starting to get my life back together like it once was. Mm -hmm. Lynn completely broke down. He was clearly overwhelmed that his dream had come true. <laughs> really, uh, I hope and pray I get a real good night's sleep. Wake up and it's not Twilight Zone, it's real. This episode, it really pulled on my heartstrings. Sometimes I can really grow to love my hoarding clients on the show, and Len was one of those people. You know, he lost his mom when he was eight. Shortly thereafter, he lost his dad. He had a heart attack when he was an adult. Then he lost his job, and things just seemed to continue that way for him. And sometimes it's just really easy to see how a person can develop these hoarding tendencies. Trauma seems to do it every time, I think. And Len was also very lonely. And I recall when his niece and nephew were in the living room clearing things out and just laughing and having a good time, trying to make the best of this lousy experience of cleaning up somebody else's house. And then Len came to me and he was crying. And um, he thought they were laughing at him. And that's why you know, I think it's always a good idea to work with professionals who can keep a thoughtful expression of behavior right in the hoarder's presence. We just don't want them to feel insecure or feel badly because we are possibly laughing at them, and we're not. In the end, we did use hundreds of boxes to sort Len's, um, his stuff, and I'm, I'm kind of stuttering because I, I remember there were, I, I had everybody put boxes on top of boxes because we were under a tent in the rain again. So we had to double up and triple up on these boxes and we're trying to sort like with like into all these boxes. And it, it was just a madhouse. Um, but what you never do see on this show is when we have all of these weather experiences, whether it's snow or massive rain and monsoons, the puddles and the mud every single day. One person from the show, whoop, whoop, you know, suddenly slides into the mud. And we, 
you know, you can't help but laugh. And here we are in the middle of what I think is a very serious situation. But I'll tell you what, those moments really make it and make us sort of a family, you know, among the experts in the crew. But bad weather is never our friend apart from that. So um, despite the misunderstandings, the more the hoard was removed, the more the family could actually see Len needed his family and they were willing to step up to do it. Len had access to his family and adult education classes and church, and then we were able to provide him a safe, clean, dehoarded home in which to live. She's having an allergy attack. There are millions and millions and millions of molecules of mold in this house, in every single nook and cranny. It's deadly. She just tells me to go do a puff of my hair and then she doesn't worry about it anymore. And I move past the Feeling bad, too angry. And you just threw this in on the garbage, damn it! Oh. It's not about me, it's about him. And I got to remember that. Do you think it's a bad idea to have your mom here? She's gonna learn something one way or another. Right. Still don't uh, get it, it's not about you yet? I'm sorry, I can't hold <sighs> it in, I'm sorry. I'm Jill, I'm 46, and I am a dog groomer. I don't know exactly why I hold on to stuff. You know, I, I guess I always go through this thing in my mind, well, you know, maybe someday I'll want it, or, or maybe someday I'll wear this. I feel if I have stuff there, it helps me remember. That's why there's pictures of things everywhere. <laughs> it's been an issue pretty much all along, but it just has gotten so much worse. And now it's, it's just like, it's overwhelming. And I, I just, I, you know, look at piles and think, oh, I don't even know where to start. I'm Carrie, I am 44, and I am Jill's sister. My grandma was a, a, a terrible hoarder, and for us, you know, we, that was our first exposure to it as children. That's my biggest fear, is that I'm gonna be, become like her. And I love my grandma, but it's like, I wish she could have gotten help. I'm Dean, I'm 48, and I'm Jill's husband probably noticed her hoarding stuff. Shortly after we got married, she had stuff when I moved her from her mom and dad's. Well, we fight about it. We, I want to get rid of stuff, she don't want to get rid of stuff, or the boys want to get rid of stuff. I get frustrated when I walk in there and it looks the way it does. Did you get your boys out of bed? Which one? Get him out of bed, please. It probably puts a, a pretty good strain on our relationship. Spencer, I'm 17 and I'm Jill's oldest son. It's really frustrating. I'm, I probably get like too mad about it sometimes. My oldest son, he's a very smart boy, very strong-willed, however. Sometimes we butt heads a little bit. Probably seems like I blame her. I'm just kind of indifferent. I don't care anymore because it's always been that way. If I have a choice to go home or somewhere else, I'll go somewhere else. I don't like it that much. I'm Tyler, I'm 13, and I'm Jill's son. I think that she just doesn't really think it's that bad, but it really is. It's, it's, it's bugging me how cluttered it is sometimes.
Tyler was allergy tested because I've been concerned about the mold that's in the basement. I try not to vacuum while he's here because that kind of stirs it up. When the dust gets stirred up, it just makes my breathing worse because I just get all stuffed up and just can't breathe as well. And she notices it too, but she just tells me to go do a puff of my inhaler and then just doesn't worry about it anymore. I'm always asking, did you take your medicine, you know, did you do or inhaler? It's it's always in the back of my mind. The the risk. I firmly believe that the house is pretty toxic. Knowing that all of this is in the basement and it's actually, you know, going through the furnace and up into the, the living floors, it's needing attention quickly. It was bad enough that the allergist had to give him a shot of epinephrine and some prednisone. And I, I, I do, I feel really bad that, you know, it, you know, he's susceptible to what is around him, even though he, he doesn't choose to, you know, have it this way. And um, I think I do need a minute. It seemed like Jill has what her grandma has, and I don't. She's trying to deal with it in other ways by trying to get rid of it. But I just, I think it takes a toll on her. You know, after seeing the way my grandma lived and how she struggled and how sad she was, and to see my sister going through the same pattern, and wow. It's, it's just, it's sad. I know that will be my future if I don't make changes. I know it. I'm Trey, I'm 40 years old, firefighter EMT for the City of Houston Fire Department. He's doing the marathon. He worked yesterday, he's working today, he's working, working again tomorrow, 72 hours. Guys I work with, they're, they're a great bunch of people. This is discount therapy right here. I know it, I'm here for you, brother. Just uh, enjoy working with them, enjoy learning from them. So I, just, just, I was checking the stuff like I do in the morning and that T-Pass actually needs to be the battery chain. I think the structure of it all, the uh, discipline of it, has started to make me take a better look at my home life. I know I got a problem with, with having too much stuff hoarding. Yeah, hard to say. Hard to say the words and say. Uh, I have a problem hoarding. I'm, I guess, emotionally uh, attached to those things I want to keep. Uh, a person that works in the fire department is not supposed to live like this. I mean, especially because we know what these kind of hazards can bring. And uh, this is just unacceptable. I'm Timothy Thomas. Uh, captain with the Houston Fire Department. When I went to his house, you know, certainly in, in 30 years in the fire department, I've seen worse. But I've never seen, personally, I've never seen this extent with somebody at that age. Based upon the way he handled his duties at the fire station, it was, uh, it was shocking to see his home and the, the condition it was in. I don't see how you can live that way with that type of clutter and not eventually get to the point that it's a 
affect every part of your life. It, it can't help but eventually affect his ability to just function in a workplace. And that's one thing that we don't really tolerate real well in the fire department is, is the inability to function. My name is Mia and I'm Trey's sister. My brother's house is chaos. When I walk in the door, um, you have that moment of, oh, God. How can you live like this and be calm, be organized? I think it affects performance. I think it affects his concentration. I'm Patricia, and I'm Trey's mother. I was in Trey's house and I just started crying because I said, I, Trey, I can't stand to be there. I said, you don't understand. I said, I get so anxious. I had to use the restroom and I almost killed myself because I tripped over some boxes that were in there. And it's just, and stuff, and see, it just makes me crazy. He, he went ballistic because he said we threw things away. And then when we threw away a broken frame, we threw away junk mail. But he wants to go through everything. He wants to look at everything. I just don't like stuff being thrown away behind my back. I feel very violated and very serious break of trust if someone does that. I feel like they're doing something to me. And I don't like that at all. So there it is. It's sad because my whole family has adjusted to this disorder that I am afflicted with. This is not how I want us to live. Hi, come on in. Hi, Jill, how are you? Good. I'm Dr. Marla Dibler, a clinical psychologist who specializes in the treatment of anxiety disorders. I have learned how to work in very small areas. I kind of like compare it to being in camping. There are a number of rooms that Jill has some difficulty with. The kitchen, for example, is significantly cluttered. She doesn't have any available counter space at all. I would love to be able to use it, you know, to roll out my dough or make my cookies and, you know, cool my cookies, but it just it just kind of has a continuous clutter problem. There's one entire guest room that is used for storage and it's barricaded. So not only is the room completely full of items, but also the room can't be accessed because of the items. Okay, and this is my bedroom. It's a lot of clothes. Yes, it is. It's um, gotten way out of control. How I haven't been in the closet in 10 years. How do you pick out what you're going to wear for the day? Um, usually I kind of look for the color of what I'm looking for and kind of wiggle it out of the pile and occasionally it tips over and I have to scoop it up and toss it back on the top. Jill has particular difficulty with clothing and with sentimental items. I think the biggest challenge we're going to have with Jill is that she's going to get stuck on sentiment. We're going to have to give her a more functional and adaptive way to be able to hang on to those memories without actually hanging on to all those things but it's going to be very important to clean up this house in order to prevent Tyler from having further health problems. The sampling that we performed for you, uh, a couple of things uh, are of concern to me. You had significant spore counts of toxigenic mold spores that were present on most of those materials where you see the black growth or the gray growth on some of that stuff that's laying on the floor. Mm -hmm. Anytime you have a lot of water or moisture in the right environment, which is temperature and humidity, you have mold growth. On a scale of one to 10, the basement area would certainly be a 10. The 
crisis for this family is going to be prevention. They have a lot of family discord because of the conflicts about not being able to discard things and they're unable to move forward. I think that if it continues this way without intervention, that this could be a family that falls apart. Just everything ends up back being dirty, so there's really no point in cleaning it. And it's just useless stuff. I've kind of become numb to the mess, I guess. I know I got a problem. It's sad for me to see something that's got use go to waste, no matter what it is. Just seeing it go in the trash is just such a waste, such a shame, and it, it saddens me. Without some sort of drastic intervention, I don't see this resolving itself. And that's my concern. There comes a, a point of, I think, of no return, and I'm trying every way possible to force it on him about getting help just to get him turned around. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm Dr. Suzanne. I'm Trey, nice to meet you. I'm Suzanne Chabot. I'm a clinical psychologist, and I specialize in OCD and hoarding. This is the living room. Um, well, I was starting to, starting to go through stuff and thought I got a couple boxes to kind of help organize, but just kind of mm -hmm. let it go for now. Okay. And you have pictures of loved ones on the walls. You yeah. did a nice job. With hoarding, we've noticed that a lot of hoarders early in their life had perfectionistic tendencies. Your caps are well organized. You have belts on the door that are organized. Yeah. When I discuss this with him, this he thing. agrees that he does have perfectionistic tendencies, that out. anything <laughs> He does, he has to do extremely well. I like it the way I like it. Yeah, yeah. and I, my guess is that gets in the way of you completing tests because it takes you more time. The areas that he did tackle to organize are very well organized, and yet he cannot organize other areas in part because he can't get it just right. So then he gives up. This is mainly uh, a bed I bought uh, probably two years ago now. I just never got around to put it together because I wanted to stain the wood first. One of my primary roles is teaching him new skills for organizing himself, for staying on task, for making decisions, how to reduce some of his perfectionism so that he can get some work done. So are you ready for tomorrow? No. <laughs> no, not, 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 I will be though, I think. I'll, I'm getting there. We're going to tape you to the tree. <laughs> yeah. We're going to tape your mouth shut. We're just going to keep walking stuff out. <laughs> yeah, see what I'm talking about? No, we're going to be able There's to hear. no problems in the fire department. They get your stuff out all in the open, talk about it, and get it all squared away, yeah. What's embarrassing, uh, one, is even admitting the problem. Two, hearing simplistic solutions, because it's not as simple as throwing it all away. It just isn't. A lot of it is just going through boxes I haven't been in in probably 10, 15 years, but there's stuff in those boxes no, that I don't want to see. Boxes, yeah, see, we're yeah. Just taking the boxes right out. Yeah, you can do then. You don't have to come tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. But there's probably half the stuff in here that I don't want to get rid of. I want to make sure I've gone through with a fine tooth comb. And I'm, I'm moving tonight so these guys can't find my house. <laughs> Good luck with that, we have them out. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't want to get too far outside the comfort zone because I don't want to lose my ever-loving mind in the process. That's the last thing I want. All right, we're off on a dirty shirt, guys. Thanks, you tomorrow. All right. It's like I just, I kept everything, you know, and I'd, I would, never wanted to get rid of anything. It was one thing I could control was my stuff. My room now was full of crap. And one summer that got cleaned out and it's been relatively clean ever since. 
except for my mom's stuff that's under my desk, which got put there last time she cleaned. So I'm storing her crap. It's just stupid stuff we don't need. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, morning, Matt. I'm Matt Paxton. I'm a hoarding specialist. We are here as we need to get some order back in our life. We just we need some rules. The real situation here is the fear of where this hoarding could take them. Jill and her family all saw what her grandmother did as an extreme hoarder with, you know, a level five with, with just pathways through the house. And we're not there with, with Jill's case. She's very, very young in, in, the, in the hoarding progression, uh, but she's got all the tools to be a stage five. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's do it. I'm all ready for this. I think I've gone through my little worrying stages and, and I'm ready. Mom, I'm gonna enact some positive reinforcement. You're doing a swell job. Thank you. Yeah, Tyler, I appreciate no nice. sarcasm whatsoever. Thank you. Do my best. Uh, I encouraged the family to be positive and reinforce yourself. Hey, you're doing a good job. So Spencer, being a 17-year-old boy, he did it. He did exactly what I asked and in a tone that completely told me to screw off. I don't know if it's donatable. No, this, is, this is what you want. You want this place clean. It's awesome. So I you got to stay my positive. Car in here too. You know, he's, he's been pissed for a long time. His life is different because of this. He doesn't have the life that his friends have. And he's, for what, four hours of seeing his mom make an effort? It's gonna take, you know, 40 days, not four days. There's five cents on bottles and cans in Iowa. Fair That's enough. why they're in here, because they need to go get mm -hmm. returned. Okay but recycled. So what? I'm I will fine give you with five cents. You. Hold up, Let's, let me get Spencer. this. Spencer. I don't know why she just can't bring herself to throw stuff away. It's just, it, instead of throwing stuff away, she just keeps it. And it's stupid that we keep it. I'm getting irritated. All right, you need to take five. Why irritated? Because Spencer is making all the decisions. Just get rid of it, just get rid of it. And I'm getting irritated. Seriously? I don't want it. I want this. His Boy Scout uniform. If I had a Girl Scout uniform, I'd, ha I'd probably still have it in the closet, you know? But my mom got rid of that a long time ago, you know? So, and it, it's, it's not a childhood issue, I don't believe. It's just, I was hoping it'd be more important to him. It reminds me of, you know, when they were cute and innocent. I mean, there's just something precious to her about young and, and you know, childlike things. And we had fun together. You know, because I was usually there participating. It doesn't mean nothing to him that he can just, you know, just discard it. All right, you and I are going to switch out. You're going to start grabbing stuff. I'm excited. Yes. Thank you, brother. Well, they're kitchen towels I should be using now. OK. But I don't think they'll realistically get used in the... I think they will. Okay. What's it like, Spencer, to be helping your mom get rid of stuff? Awesome. That's... It's, um... How does it feel to hear Spencer say that? I think I've shut off all the feelings. Okay. I already said I needed to keep that, and I already told you why. You okay? No. You're getting overwhelmed? I'm getting angry. Okay. I yeah. already told you I had to keep this. I don't know where to put it, though. Okay. Spencer, do you have any problem with her keeping it? It's okay. And it's fine. Okay. It's fine. I need that. Just be, Oh, you just, need this? I already knew him and I were going to have confrontation because that is kind of the theme that's been going on between him and I lately. You're how old? 17. And you're how old? 46. Okay. You guys got to both start acting like adults. And when you okay. say things to piss each other off, that doesn't help anything. A bunch of kids are not going to clean a house and keep it clean. A couple of adults that actually communicate possibly can. Okay. 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 I just don't think he respects anything I'd like. So, and I move past the feeling bad to angry.
I don't get why he feels he has to keep all of these things, but I see that he does feel like he has to keep all these things. And I try really hard to be sensitive about it. But I mean, sometimes it's like, dude, you just gotta let this stuff go. This is ridiculous. With this cleanup process, mm, I may have some trust issues that I don't know how I'm gonna deal with yet, honestly. Good morning, everybody. Morning. morning. Thank you. I'm Geraldine Thomas, and I'm a certified professional organizer specializing in chronic disorganization. Um, we have a big crowd here. It's one of the biggest crowds I've ever had assembled to help one person get organized in a house this size. We have plenty of help, and our speed is going to be determined by how quickly you make decisions today. Okay? Okay. Everybody ready to go? Yes. Yes. Yay. Let's go. Let me let me let me let me hold on to that, please, for just a little while longer. I'm looking at this stuff. All this could actually go back in the garage, honestly, because I'm gonna want to go through it some more. We'll just put that aside, and I'll look at it later. Mr. Kimball, 1995. Who the hell is that? Mm -hmm. If he's like that here, if he's undecisive here, where he can't, you know, throw a piece of paper away, you know, or, or make a snap, make a decision, he's going to carry that to work, and we can't have that. You know, we got to make snap decisions all the time. You know, and just that's that's our job. Like, this probably like wouldn't even work. Like I could probably we could decide to throw this away, and, and yeah. your life would go on very well with that. Stop for a second. Don't don't pick it up. Right, you just well. you just made that decision. That was a good decision. You're forgetting that this is a mental disorder. Well, I understand that, but you're well, also forgetting you're a firefighter, not a therapist. Well, Having the firefighters here is really a mixed blessing. Do you want to keep that cooler, bro? Well, for now, I'll get rid no, of. No, we'll just get rid of the it. cooler. We'll just, we put it in a good box. Come on. We're They're being extremely here. helpful. But there's also a downside. I would like everybody to stop distracting oh, him for the next five minutes, OK? OK. okay. Their speed yeah. is moving a lot quickly. I don't think they understand this disorder. Yeah. Ask yourself again, what is this stuff? What is it worth Well, to I just want to make sure nothing okay. in there that no, that's I don't what I'm going to Look through it. Yeah. And ask, and ask yourself, what is it worth? You don't need that. What is that? Oh, that I don't even know what that oh. is. Chunk it. I want to acknowledge that I know it's uncomfortable for you. I can see the discomfort. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you thinking right now, this moment? Because I tell you, I've, you I've, there's boxes I want to go through that, you know. That's... You're thinking about what's going on over there, Yeah. Huh? OK. Yeah. I think yeah. Trey is reaching his limit right now as to the decision making and the speed. Solid, solid. Let it go. Mom, your input is, is, is appreciated, but unwarranted. I'm, I'm kind of numb right now, honestly. And what is the, the numb? Just from what? The speed. Too much. Yeah. It feels too much, like too, too much. Too fast. OK. When he starts numbing, he feels like that becomes a signal, a red flag to relapse. You feel comfortable with yeah. all your decisions? I've visited this before. I've been here before. And I've regressed before. And I don't want to regress again. You can watch more Hoarders episodes every Sunday morning this month starting at 7 a.m. on A&E. You know, I've hit the bottom. I am disgusted by the house. You know, the whole house feels like a prison. The kitchen went very slowly. Jill felt the need to look through everything and evaluate everything, and she had a difficult time sort of paring down the items that she values. It's not empty. I hate wasting stuff. There was a container of dishwashing detergent, and she became very irritated when we started to question her. How much use are you going to get out of that? A couple. Can we um, put it in a place other than on the counter so that you can get the rest out of it? How about if we put it in your little sponge thing? 
Um, how about if we clear space? How about we just throw classes? it away and we don't discuss it anymore? Good. Okay. Keep moving. I I'm okay with getting rid of it. Okay. Okay. Fabulous. Okay. Okay. One of my hobbies. I had the whole ba dad's basement lined all the way around with all the model semis they, all the companies came out with. Is it hard to throw them away? Yep. How hard? Hard. I'm sure after everyone leaves, she's going to complain about stuff that got thrown away. Yeah. I, I put know. cookies and I take them to the kids' well, I don't school. see the container. You know, it was it was quite a lesson for me to to understand that you know there is a importance to everything that she keeps, and you know trying to respect that and and at the same time trying to clean her house up with her, um, it was a it was a tough balance at times. And you just threw this in on the garbage, damn it! Well, I was advised that everything in this cabinet you okay to throw away because you wanted this stuff in the cabinet. <sighs> okay, we're wasting time here. Whatever. Mm -hmm. oh. She's having an allergy attack. I don't know if she's ever had one Would before. you like a mask? No, I'm OK. I like to rephrase that. I'd like you to wear a mask if you will. This house is so dangerous because there are millions and millions and millions of molecules of mold in this house. In every single nook and cranny, you know, on every surface, there's, uh, it just, it, it's deadly. It actually is probably one of the most dangerous houses we go into. You just can't tell. Too much I want to go through that I can go. Is there anything go. at all in this pile? Oh, Going through everything was faster than my comfort zone. All my speakers, I told a few times, are supposed to stay. Okay. I think I told you that. There's, there's, there's a few missing. Okay. And I don't know where they are. They'll turn up. I want. They you. better. Listen, nobody's throwing things away. That's, you know. The speed of it all is an anxiety level that I don't like. You're going to come up with a reason to hang on to every single thing. I was thing. getting really good at getting rid of some stuff. It just when I'm forced to get rid of a lot of stuff, I'm afraid I start saving a lot of stuff. OK. I don't want to feel like I'm needing to get stuff back because I got rid of some stuff today. And we'll have fun, fun, fun. That's why I asked you to shred it. I am. I am. Okay. I just you want... wait all this time to tell me that? No. Fucking hell. You know? Yeah, go. Bye. Do you think it's a bad idea to have your mom here? No. No, because she's going to learn something one way or another, honestly. And who's going to teach her the uh, lesson? You know. I'm still trying to figure out the relationship among the members of his family. So I can't have the lamp? That That's mine. I want that. Which one do you want to keep? I'd rather them go together, though. And then can I have them both? It's a very confusing picture. On one hand, he is loyal to his mom, protective of her. Because I, I want, want her to be comfortable to. here. I don't want him to yeah. get hurt. You want her to be comfortable. Yeah, when she comes over. Yeah. On the other hand, he's clearly aggravated by some of the things she says to him. He gets angry very quickly. This shouldn't have gone out of the house. None of this should have been moved. The constant interruptions from his sister, from his mom, their distractions. And the sooner everybody accepts that, the better the process will be for Trey. It's not about me, it's about him. And I got to remember that. Why don't they 
hurry up and do some stuff because the, I'm seeing it and my eyes are hurry just going. Hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait. Yeah. No, well, not no, hurry up and wait. She hurry thinks so. Because it's should... about her. It's not about me. They so then asked why me. are you getting upset again? Because, Trey, I'm sorry. My brain under, thinks you that you way. You still don't uh, get it. It's not about you yet? All she sees is what he's not throwing away. And I'm like, you know, nobody needs that kind of negativity. Yes, I see them haul off two and a half trucks, and that's wonderful. But I want more. Wow. Wow. What, I'm not supposed to make any, I'm sorry, I can't hold it in. I'm sorry. I'm going to the other room if it really frustrates your mom, okay? I'm sorry, Trey. You wouldn't do it again and again and again if you really were. That's how I'm I see it. Well, I, but I am sorry. Yeah. Okay, so today, because we only have today to deal with your feelings. Right. And so the more you can be aware of what you really feel and what you really need, the more you're going to get over this hoarding yes. problem. Yes. So take a deep breath, calm down. <laughs> yeah, take a nap. <laughs> and let's go, let's go do some work. Yeah, okay. let's go do some work. <sighs> I yeah. noticed you have okay. lots of extra toothbrushes. Okay. I'm finding them all over your house. I was really frustrated when they stopped making them because I really liked the way they worked. And, you know, if they made them again, <laughs> I hope I wouldn't, but I'd probably buy like a hundred of them. Your sister is rolling her eyes and well, sighing. Well, Trey, it's, just... it's a toothbrush. And about how long will you hang on to these? If I could find tomorrow. If you can't find them. Let's say that you will, never find them again. I never find them again when they get really, where they're not any, whether they're not working like I think they're working anymore, they're gone. Okay. But they still work a little bit, and I, whenever the toothbrush issue seemed to bring up a lot of stuff that I was honestly surprised that, that it, you know, to me it's plain and simple cut and dried issue. Most people, if they can't find the toothbrush they prefer, they just pick another. All right, I'm going to get you back in here and keep keep working oh, on your camping. Funny. I am listening, Trey. Trotty, when I say stop. I'm listening, put your hands to your side. I am contact with me now, please. When you and you scoff like you did earlier about the, the toothbrushes, toothbrush. and you earlier about whatever it was, it wants to send me back into a depression cycle. Need to hoard again. So if I walk away, and will that make you feel that way too? If you try to at least act like you're trying to understand where I'm coming from. Do you want me to act, you, even though it's not sincere? I want you to try to understand this problem that I have. You started fiddling again, you Could disengaged from this. Mom, engaged. just, yes, he's asking you, you not. Yes, have. Hold All on. right, Tra okay. Put it back. I'm listening. I'm listening. Put could it back. You, could you guys come in here and talk about it? <sighs> Take a deep yeah, breath. You think you heard what I said. That's a communication thing again. You want to make so sure she hears it exactly right. Yes. You want to make sure this she one really catches a gets lot of it. it. This one, so much is lost on this one. Okay. So wait, and let's... And him just and say how he just said this one. This one. Like okay. I'm some kind of animal, and I'm not. So I'm, not, not I'm very frustrated it. right okay, now. Okay, but that's how it comes across when he just said what that's he said That's why I chose my words very carefully just then. But you didn't say you Yes, I did. No, not to me. This one. Yeah, that's, that's not for me it was. It worked it. great for me. See, see how angry he that's is? That's not how he meant okay, it. Okay, this is quiet, Mia. This is between Trey and I. I'm very angry right now. Okay. These are good people that probably share a common problem in thinking. It has made it a very hot situation, very prone to conflict. You made a comment when I was trying to say something to them, you know? No, I didn't make a comment. You're hearing things. I did not make a comment. I didn't say anything. I want him to know that I love him very much, and I want the very best for him. And if I had any way caused this problem for him, I am truly sorry. And I didn't mean to if I did. I want only the very best for my son, and I wish him all the success. I think this opportunity has been a giant first step.
towards the goal that he wants of not being a hoarder or just not letting it get out of control. This is the beginning of developing some self-worth. So the consistency in his life is not defined by objects around him that are always there and never go away, but the consistency is defined by himself, who he is, what he believes about himself. I know I can do this. I know I can uh, tackle this. It's a lot still to do, but uh, got a great start and a really great turbo boost this week. I just got to make the effort and not get lazy and not uh, dwell on any negatives. Whatever doesn't come out of that bedroom in the next hour isn't coming out. Okay, we gotta get it out. You agree with, you understand that whatever doesn't come out in the next hour, you're, you're on your own. Yes. I want to clean this house. I want it done. We do too. I know you do. And that's why I'm pushing you on this. I know you're going to be exhausted. I know. But that's part of the okay. part of the battle. How about all those books? It's a lot of books. <laughs> and I don't want to go through them all right now. This is absolutely got to stay. We are running out of time. Okay. I want that basket, by the way. Don't try sneaking that out. Oh, we got a lot of baskets. Yeah, we have a ton of baskets. I don't care. I want it. The dust bunny, you dork. It's like a dust wolf. You just gotta remember that kid with severe asthma that. is breathing this in. <laughs> this is this is loud. <laughs> you know, this is a big deal. Well, I hadn't really thought previously how the clutter had contributed to you know all of our allergy and asthma symptoms. You know, it's it's kind of sad, but we've accepted you know that is kind of normal. We all sneeze and sneeze and blow our noses and. How can that make any sense? I'm so grossed out by dirt, but I live in it. How does that make any sense? You're starting to see things a little differently, Jill. That's a good thing. Now I know that I had a big part in it. That knowledge is definitely empowering. It was time for me to let it go and pick up and move on. These can be trashed. I got a little dust in my eyes. Trash, step aside. This is burning, and that's Dad's stuff. This goes in the craft cupboard. Uh, what's this? Has to be burned. I would like to think that we're starting to communicate better and understand each other better. And I will get Dad to come look through that stuff right now. Hey. My biggest concern was they didn't understand how bad the air quality was in this home because they couldn't see it. There was too much crap in the house. Well, now they did a great job decluttering the home. What's different now is there's no blaming. They're just doing, they're taking action. Well, I didn't think this was all gonna happen. I figured we'd get two rooms done and be done with it, but it's really come together. I'm happy. Woohoo! This looks like a, not even my kitchen. Before I thought she just was gonna keep everything forever, and now it feels a lot better because I know she can get rid of stuff. Everybody kicked in and worked so hard. It was just awesome. <laughs> I just think about my grandma. I just didn't want to see Jill go down that same that same path. And it's just it's been a miracle. You guys are really wonderful. You're a lifesaver.
never really get to use a lot of my organizing tips on the hoarder show because we're usually busy repairing the plumbing, replacing a toilet, or fixing the shower. So I thought we should talk about organizing tips for the bathroom. And you know, the bathroom has a big time waster in there. I, it's not what you think. It's actually the mirror because you know we're trying to find all of our imperfections and we're looking for sorts of hair products and uh, cosmetics so that we can improve and well talking about imperfections you'll actually see on many of these hoarders episodes that i'm always wearing a face mask and i'm getting rained on and my hair is blowing and i'm perspiring and my perfections or rather imperfections are just a little too obvious. However, in my bathroom, I am able to maintain optimum organization, and you can too. The process really starts with thinking about what's most important for you in that room. Because organization is really personal and should accommodate your lifestyle. So for example, if you don't use, what is it, cotton balls when you take off your makeup, why do you have a decorative jar with cotton balls next to the sink? If you don't use washcloths every day when you shower or take a bath, why keep them on the shelf? So eliminate that kind of clutter and then think about brand allegiance. If you can stay devoted to just one or two brands in terms of your hair products and cosmetics, you will have fewer choices to make when getting ready and you'll have fewer half empty containers hanging around in your cabinets. So by switching brands, you are taking the risk of trying a new product and not liking it, and then it hangs around for a really long time. Why? Because, well, you've invested money in it, it was expensive, and number two, there's still so much left in the bottle or in the tube, so you're not gonna throw it away, but you're not really using it either. So you can minimize these mispurchases by having what I call brand allegiance. Now. If you have a small bathroom or small space in the bathroom and you've got multiple people using that bathroom, I like to suggest that you use like a college tote that students use to go back and forth in the dorm to the bathrooms. And everybody brings in their own toiletries and you pack it back out when you're done. Another great idea is one of these organizing bins. I'll show it to you here. It's got several drawers and you can keep it under the bathroom sink. And all you have to do is pull out one of the drawers and then keep it with you while you get ready. This one happens to have a bunch of toothpaste and dental floss and things like that in it. And then when you're done, you just put it back underneath the sink. So it keeps things stored really easily for you. There you are. These are clutter-free solutions, and I truly hope that you will be able to get organized quickly so you can get out the door faster. Good luck. I'm not a hoarder. I have a lot of stuff. Child Protective Services would take that child away. I get over-emotional about my son. When the objects go, the emotions will flow. She don't appreciate nobody doing nothing for her. I can't I'm a pack rat. If she don't get the house right, they're gonna take that house. This is the biggest hoard I've ever dealt with. I can't fit through here. Barbara's almost hysterical. What's the point living in the house when you ain't got nothing? I'm Roxanne, a former model, a makeup artist, and a mom. I started modeling when I was nine years old. I really loved it. I loved to travel and meet new people and be in a different city.
I'm really happy that I have my baby. It's like my light, like, you know. So he's Mr. Personality. Like, he has a lot of personality just for, you know, a seven month old. I'm Monique, and I'm Roxanne's older sister. The house is just messy. It's just a lot of stuff. Well, my house is very cluttered. Very cluttered. Just things that were left behind from other generations and some of my mom's things and my granddad's things. Also things that I've accumulated over the years. I definitely have concerns about when Joaquin starts walking that, you know, he could hurt himself, like get into something or like pull something down. Roxanne likes to save everything. I do feel that she isn't a hoarder. Yeah, I'm not a hoarder. I'm just like, I have a lot of stuff. Upcycling for me is just finding the use in something that you can make it something beautiful. If you want to throw something out, Roxanne will be like, I can make something out of that or I can do this. There's always a reason why she keeps stuff. Whenever I go to a thrift store, I look for vintage items and I found really good things. She's very creative but Roxanne doesn't follow through with a lot of stuff. I do have a lot of projects that they're half done. It's just difficult because like my son demands so much attention and you know, I give him that attention. I'm Richard, I'm Roxanne's boyfriend. When I first walked in the house, um, I kind of was a little bit shocked, to be honest with you. I couldn't believe how many things had accumulated. Yeah, Richard is such a neat freak. Like, it, it drives me crazy sometimes. <laughs> All right, well, I'm... I'm kind of neat. Everything has to be in its place, and if it's out of place, he will not sit still. You know, I, I like things to have certain order uh, in my life. Because he's like, oh, babe, you got to clean. You got to organize. You know, when I first got there into the kitchen, I've never washed so much silverware in my life. And I'm like, yo, dude, chill. like. Just stop. This is a family home, and my mother and I moved in with my granddad. And so it's been in the family for a really long time. I do have many good memories from this house. I spent a lot of time with her every day. It's kind of difficult to like, you know, come home and she's not here. I'm happy that I had the mother that I had. I miss my mom a lot. If Roxanne doesn't get her life in order, She's going to always be upset, depressed. The hoarder might get worse. I really know that my sister loves her baby, but if you don't keep everything in order, then people that don't really know you are going to judge, and that could become a problem. I'm Barbara, and I'm a mother of 10 children. 
and I've been a homemaker most of my life. I love to do gardening. I've never felt that I'm a hoarder. I'm a pack rat. The, the difference between a hoarder and a pack rat is you keep it more organized. You have places to put the stuff. You don't crowd your house up. I'm Joey. I'm Barbara's youngest daughter. My mom's an extreme hoarder. She has pretty much everything that you can imagine. Broken, new, used, including garbage. She gets her stuff from everywhere. My mom will drive around the neighborhood and even in other towns, and if she comes across something that she likes in someone's garbage, she'll pick it up. And then she'll put it in the back of her car and bring it home. I'm Jeff, and I'm Barbara's fifth son. Up until I was about six years old, and we had a normal life, like any other family. The rooms were always clear, clean. It was open. There was um, no hoarding or nothing like that. I'm Brandon, I'm Barbara's sixth child. I was five years old. My mother was at work. I saw some matches laying on the ground. I grabbed them, I went upstairs with some paper and I started lighting the, the paper and then I heard somebody come in and I put it out, but I think it still had the red embers on it and I stuffed it under the bed and it uh, reignited. And the curtains were on fire. And I just grabbed my brother and I towed him downstairs we ran over the neighbor's house. We lost everything, and it burnt to the, to the ground. She was never really the same after that. But when she moved into the house she's in now, that's the first time I really started noticing that she started putting stuff in that front room. And as the years went on, it just, it just got worse. When the house burnt down and I lost a lot of stuff, that started me starting to collect more and wanting more. More stuff just kept coming in. Started piling higher and higher. Last time I was in there, about four years ago, you couldn't even get into the living room. If you wanted to go in there, you would have to crawl over something. My dad passed away in May, and she was all extremely ill soon after. She was in the hospital. The doctor told my mom, either you go stay with one of your children, or I'm gonna put you in a nursing home until you're recovered. That's when she come to stay with me. There was just no way she can live there. I know if code enforcement will come in there now, she's gonna lose everything. She has nowhere to sleep. She has nowhere to cook. Her bathroom is completely consumed, and she don't see that. I want to go back. I wanna be in my home. It's the last place my husband and I live. I'm afraid if something falls on her, she can't get it off her. And that's my worst fear, for dying in that home, because it's out of control. about my mom, like, no matter what she was going through, she'd always say, I'll let it be okay, and I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Hello. Hi. You must be eight. Yes, I am. I'm Dr. Suzanne Chabot, and I'm a specialist in OCD and hoarding disorder. Oh, I'm here to help your friend out this okay, morning. Okay, good. Great, great. Have you been in the house? Not past the living room. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go past the living room? You know, I, I'm asking myself that, too. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
So we're gonna see maybe why. I guess it's time to take a look and see what we can do. Okay. Hello, Roxanne. Hi. I'm Dr. Chabot, and of course you know Amy. Hi, how are you? How are you? And this is, must be Joaquin? Yes. Okay. Roxanne, now two months from her mother's death, still grieving, and she realizes at this point, I have to do something for my son. What were you feeling when you thought, oh, I gotta get something done here? A little ashamed. Yeah. So you go take a look, because you haven't seen the rest right. of the house, right? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and we're going to just hang out here. Okay. All okay. Right. So you realize there's a problem here. Right. But the baby yeah. was a signal to you, like, oh my gosh, this is not safe. Yeah. Here she has a difficulty providing a healthy environment for her child. If she continued on this path, it would get to the point where Child Protective Services would have to come in and take that child away. <laughs> what is going on in this room? Oh. I don't even know what to say about all these clothes on this bed. And all the hangers, but the clothes is on the bed. I don't get it. I got to go past the living room today, and I was shocked that it looked the way it looked. That was, the stuff in there was so old, and like, why didn't you just throw it away? So what room is this? This is my mom's room. Okay. Does this hold any emotion for you? Yes. And when you come into this room, what do you feel? I just try to avoid even coming in here. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't want to start crying. The biggest challenge facing Roxanne is that she needs to come to terms with the loss of her mother. It's only two months, and her mother was extremely important to her. So when the objects go, the emotions will flow, and it's going to be a river. This is going to be extremely hard for Roxanne. If you don't get the help and get the house right, they're gonna take that house. And I don't believe that'll kill my mother. Hey, Jeff. How Mark Pfeffer. Nice to meet you. And you must be Brandon. Yes. How you doing? I'm good. My name is Mark Pfeffer. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and specialist in hoarding disorder. So if you guys are ready, let's do it. Okay. I'll follow you, brother. Walking up to the house, I sensed that Brandon and Jeff were skeptical, afraid, and guarded of what was to come. Uh -oh. Hi, Barbara. We're going to try to take a tour through the house. The only way to start is going that way. Let's take a stop right here. This is where your mom sleeps. I can see on your faces it's not easy to witness this. And last time I was here, she slept in her bedroom, which you could get into. Standing on the mattress in the living room, and all the clutter around where she couldn't barely even move, she was on the bed. It was pretty bad. Going upstairs, everything's different. It's all packed. You can't get into any of the rooms upstairs. Oh my God. I can't go any further. Guys, I can't fit through here. All right, we've, we've seen enough. Barbara's loyalty is not with her children, it's with her possessions. Bottom line, it's gonna be your stuff versus family. And that's the decision tomorrow you're gonna make. Mom, we just want you to live normal, not have to, to be a prisoner to all this stuff, because that's what you are. You can't accept we me do accept you. the you. way I am. We love you. You're, you're, you're our mother. You gave us life. And we're going to help you. OK. Mm -hmm. We don't give up on you. I want you to. No, we're not. We're not, because we love you. Listen to your son. Listen to them. Barbara's tendency 
to reject love from her family is a way for her to protect her possessions. Tomorrow when we start the cleanup process, I'm concerned she's going to fight to the death to retain her possessions. Every time I do start to like try to organize or clean up, you know, like clean in my mom's room, um, I just open the door. It takes me for a little spin. And so I'll just like close the door and try to shut it away, shut, shut the memories away. But you know, it doesn't work, you know. I'm Standalyn Robertson, a certified professional organizer. Tell me what your goal is. I want to like just get everything organized and have a, a nice, safe environment for Joaquin. Roxanne, she's at a real turning point because she's grieving the loss of her mother, and now she's faced with creating a safe environment for her son. To make the decision right now to deal with it, means that Joaquin won't be inviting us here in 20 years to deal with it. I think we have a great plan, aggressive, but I think you're up for the challenge and we can get this done. Everybody ready? Yes. Yes. Good, ready. okay, let's do it. About my mom's bedroom, I didn't feel as though like I could go in there and start working, but alongside of my sister, it became a little bit easier. Favorite sweater. Yeah, not nothing too big for that. How's it going? Good. Easy? Um, yeah. Working through it. What's the hard part? Um, Mommy's clothes. That is my mom's room. That I, I can still smell her in here. It wasn't that hard getting rid of the objects. It was just being in the room, you know, feeling her presence and knowing that that was somewhere that she was and I hadn't been in there in a while. I'm sad and I miss her, but I know she's not in pain anymore and I know she's not she's not sad anymore. You know, I'm okay with that part of it, but you know, sometimes like if I want to just pick up the phone and call her, like that's setting in that I can't do that. Yeah, or touch her. You two have each other. Yeah. Yeah. You have each other. And there's a I think there's a new way to touch your mom, to honor her. Roxanne and Monique coming together in the bedroom. I'm thinking that Roxanne's really getting the idea that the heart is not in objects, the heart is in oneself. She raised two good women and now we're, we're gonna help a lot of other women. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What's going on? You're feeling no, something. Just, you know, I just miss my mom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A lot. If we can't get her property cleaned, she's gonna lose not only the things that we would throw away to get her into her house, but she's gonna lose everything. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Matt Paxton. I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. Barb, you got a lot of people here to help. We've got a very willing family, which is good. 
I've done about 2,000 houses in my career, and this is in the top five of volume. This is a massive, massive undertaking. So strategy-wise, we're gonna get into the side yard. Are you cool with that strategy, hitting the side yard first? Yes. Okay, you guys ready? Let's do it. We really don't have a lot of options. The front door is completely packed. The only option is to go down the area on the side of the house and hopefully get to the back door. Jeez. What are you thinking about this pile? I can't throw them toys away. I'm curious why you're upset about this. Those are things I've collected for my grandkids a long time. As we started sorting Barbara's items, we could see immediately that the sentimental savings of items was very important to her. I can't get rid of my bear. The smell will go away. I can't throw him away. We must remember that Barbara recently lost her husband, and her emotions are really, really at the surface. We're here for you in his place. And you know dad would have been so thrilled to get this property cleaned up. You know that, mom. You know he did not like to live like this. Do this for him. If you can't do it for yourself, let him be your reason. Barbara is just so anxious. I just want to take it really slow. All right, I got an exercise. All of us are going to keep our mouths shut. We're not going to judge at all. We're going to go through this box. I'm going to hold it up. You tell us, keep or get rid of it. That's a yard ornament. It's been. Throw it away, I guess. Throw it away, it's broke. No, I'd like to keep that. It's, that could get thrown away. How bad those two blankets? Yeah, pretty bad. Not, oh, they smell really bad, too, like mildew, Mom. You make the decision. It can go. Good job. Yeah, you're Very doing good great. Job. We're earning her trust, which is what we needed to do. But man, we are way behind. The hard part is this just gets us to the back door. Now we got to go in the house tomorrow. I know. Tomorrow's going to be hard. Tomorrow's going to be really hard. We only did one dumpster. On most hordes, that would be a huge celebration at the end of the day. But I, I got like 15 more dumpsters to fill. We have to just kill it tomorrow. You can watch more Hoarders episodes every single Sunday this month at 7 a.m. on A&E. Patterns. Yeah. I want you to see your stuff together, so let's focus on the fabric for now, okay? Okay. And I'm asking you to make hard decisions, okay? Hard decisions. So what do you want to do, Roxanne? You want to make space, make room for all this ma yeah. material? Yeah. It's not that much. It's not that much. No. I'm not saying get rid of it. I'm just... That's what totally. Okay. Is this all of your fabric? Yeah, and yeah, this is all of it yeah, here. Yeah, I don't think she showed us all the fabric because I think it's more. Just because you can do it doesn't mean that you have to do it or you will have time to do it. I'm keeping my fabric. There's no, can we come to a middle ground? On, like, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know it's fabric. I know Leave it's my fabric alone. alone. It's not realistic to keep it, but for her, I think that's where she's putting her foot now. I'm keeping it. What, are, what about the chairs in the kitchen? Are we, are we going to save no. those? Those chairs only bother you, so you know they're going to stay. Well, they're not my favorite chairs. Oh, gosh, no. Leave my kitchen chairs alone, because it goes with my kitchen table, all right? I think those actually would be good to be donated. That's it. 
like, it's no other, like, discussion about my kitchen chairs. Um, if she deals with somebody that's not exactly seeing eye to eye with her or doing what she wants them to do, then you see a different side. Are you going to go out and buy me a kitchen table and chairs? Because I'm not throwing away my kitchen chairs just because you may be a hypochondriac. You're like thinking every, that you're everything is going to get everything is going to get me sick. You're allergic to yeah. You're, and you're if like, I'm sitting oh my on God, chairs I'm that out. you break out from everything. So you can't make decisions um, where somewhere it's not your house. I'm just not feeling like Roxanne's absorbing lessons that people are here trying to educate, trying to guide her, trying to say things to her, and that worries me. You're trying to like come at my chairs like, oh, they're 80s chairs? No, my mom purchased this set in the 2000s, okay? I think we can agree to disagree here. No, I'm not going to agree to disagree. They're my kitchen chairs. They're staying. I don't care. I've got to get pretty much an entire floor clean today, or there's no chance I'll finish this house. We've got to hit on all cylinders for this to be successful. Good morning, everybody. Time-wise, we got to hustle today. So we're going to get in the kitchen, and we're going to make some hard decisions. I can't do it if it has to be fast and hard. Well, you can, and we will. Now that we start picking the stuff up, you start to see maggots, rat poop, rats, barbers stuff this is extremely, extremely dangerous. This is all trash. How out can my pl plant food be contaminated? That came out of the kitchen. I can't save anything that's soft goods, so those clothes that came out of the kitchen, they have to go. I can't throw all this stuff away. I'm not throwing my tin away for nobody. How can I do it, Jay? Question is, Barbara, how could you not do it for yourself and your family? In order for her to move forward in life, something has to change. But Barbara right now is using incessant crying, sobbing, whatever she can do to stop what's going on. This is cruel. It may seem cruel, but this is the way to get you to learn not to let this happen. I'm never going to learn. It's going to make me better. So how are we doing in here? Can you get in there a little bit, maybe over by that chair? Usually by this time in the process, the anxiety is going down, and we are skyrocketing. You can't just trash this stuff, Jeff. This isn't trashable stuff. It is. Now, the stuff in the backyard under the tent, a lot of that can be saved. 99% of that ain't going to be able to be saved. Well, you don't know that. I haven't got a choice. There's no choice in this within this situation. Mom, you made a, you made there a thing. There ain't no choices in this Mom, situation. Mom, you made a point of situation where you made you to have no choice. This is where it all began. Well, how about trying you, to help you. What do you want me to say? All I know is this is not junk in here to be tossed away. There's stuff that you haven't seen for not freaking. Not in this room. Oh, no, leave me, leave me alone. Yesterday, we cleared a lot of things out, and I want to dedicate today to your mom and give her the home that I know she wants her grandson to have. Okay. I'm feeling really good about like today, you know, so I'm ready to get it started. Let's go. <laughs> so here's a suggestion. While the books are on the bookshelf and not bothering anybody, let's deal with all the stuff on the floor, all the stuff that's piled up. 
then we'll take a look at the books. But the but bookshelf could be somewhere to put the stuff that's on the floor. I agree, but let's see how much we keep. Let's deal with the floor. You're making really We're just at the top of the stairs talking about our strategy for the craft room and it just went downhill from there. Roxanne does not read them books. I just do like you read. said. Okay, I read all come, the time. How do you talk about about I don't read? Well, like, then how come you haven't read those books? Y'all been here for three years. I do read those you books. You read those books? So you already read them. I didn't read all of them. You don't need all those books. Monique speaks her mind. She doesn't have a filter on her mouth. Sometimes you got to look at her and be like, Mo. The, what's the look? Like, the looks don't phase me, so either Yeah, but if I flip going... out and start cussing everybody out, and then uh, you get what? mad if I tell you how I'm but feeling, and walk. then you be like, Guess oh, what? I don't care. How about this? See, exactly, see, house. just like that. See? Yes, just like so that, because by me not you even saying favor. anything to you, then it won't even be a favor, because I can go home to my house. Take your ass to home, then. You need to stop acting like a baby. You need to grow up and act 32. No, just please, like, leave me alone for a second because, like, she's getting the on my nerves. But she don't appreciate nobody doing nothing for her. She thinks that everybody is obligated to do stuff. That's what you mean? No, just. What do you want to do, Roxanne? Do you want to no. finish this up? No. Yeah, I'm just. She's going to go outside me. and throw her tantrum. You going to go outside and throw a tantrum now? Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. This is the real Roxanne that everybody's seeing right now. If you don't say yes to what she wants, then she throws a tantrum. Roxanne. Let's start over. No, leave me alone. Where are you going? What's going on? What's going on? Don't walk past me. Come here. What's going on? Stop. Calm down. What's going on? Talk to me. They can't make a choice of what they do with that stuff in the living room because it all has to be gone through. Well, what's in there? It's my personal stuff. You want to come show me? No, I don't want to go back in there. I don't want to see my mom lose her home, but my mom just won't let us help her. If you don't let us help you today, you lose everything. You don't get a chance to keep anything. But there's not enough time. Uh, listen to me. Stop. Day. Listen. You want let me, me to talk. Just start throwing let me everything. talk. We are giving you a choice to keep things. The what am I keeping? Stop. Let me talk. Let me talk, please. If the city comes in, they're Here taking. Here we go. Listen. City again. Always come, Mom, bring listen to me. the city to me. I'm just when telling the you, they're not going to care. The city hasn't bothered me they're for years. They're not going to care. They are. They're going to bother you. Yeah, now. Please, let me talk. And that was I died talk. with Joe. We care about you. We're giving you a choice. I don't want the city's not going to. I don't to. want choice. Listen to me. I don't want to. They're going to take everything. All. You're not going to get nothing. All right, then they do it. And I'll live under a bridge. What's the point of living in a house when you ain't got nothing? Here's the plain fact and truth of it all. If you don't let us help you, you Didn't know. help me. Didn't help me. Barbara's almost hysterical, shaking and crying taking consideration Barbara's mental health, it doesn't make sense to go on. From the mental health point of view, we're kind of feeling that it's taking too much out of you right now. I don't want to keep doing this to you. It's not fair. What I'm going to do now, as opposed to cleaning the whole house, I'm going to try to get you two to three feet all the way through the house, from the back door to the front door. So if your house catches on fire, you can choose which door you're going to go out of. Are you OK with that plan? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Even though we drastically lowered our expectations, this is still the biggest tort I've ever dealt with. We got to hustle every minute tomorrow to get this done. All right, good morning, everybody. Brandon, Jeff, and I are going to go inside. All we're doing is making a path. Are we clear on that, everyone? Let's go work. All right.
taken us about three hours to get through the living room. Now we're through it, we're finally at this other room. All I see is an arch, and Jeff just starts climbing up. 10 minutes later, he's banging on the front door. There it is. Hey! I mean, this is four feet above me. This is blowing my mind. I know. So after three days, lots of turmoil, we can finally get two safe exits. We're gonna take Barbara in to show her what we've done. This was about safety. I still don't think it's safe. Hmm. You don't think it's safe? I agree. No, it's, it's not safe, safe enough. We all wanted to do more. I wanted to get more out. I wanted more cleared for her. There's still a lot to do. Still needs a lot of cleaning and disinfecting. They want you to have quality of life. That's what they're talking about. That's all we ever wanted, is you to have a safer life. This is a good start. You just gotta be strong and finish it, okay? And this is the first mile of a marathon. Right. right now, I don't know if I have a future or not. But I'm still hoping to finish the house so I can live in it. Roxanne, are you serious? Roxanne leaves, and now I'm stuck with the person that I need to make all of the decisions is gone. She ran down the street. She's gone. I don't know where she at. <laughs> I have guys just hanging around, waiting to help. I have a team of organizers, and she's gone. Come back to the house, Roxanne. We're not gonna be chasing you or trying to find out where you're at. Just come back to the house so we can get this done. Hey, no, sis. Hi. You calm down a little bit? Mm-hmm. You ready to get back started? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So watch your mouth and let's go. All right. Let's go. When Roxanne came back, everything was OK. okay. There's no hard feelings. And she is who she is, so I know her. Just today, everybody else got a chance to meet the real Roxanne. We're at a critical point. Truthfully, what I was thinking, I was like, let me not waste everybody's time. <laughs> like, we're here to do a job, so, you know. So that's why I, I pulled it together and came back. So, hard decisions ahead. Okay. Okay. Trash. That goes. Okay. The dressers are gone. So you're cool with her just taking over this part? Of course, yeah. When I walked into the house, I was stunned. I couldn't believe the transformation. Oh, wow. oh my gosh. When I first saw my studio, I was in awe. Oh. Yes. Wow. As Joaquin grows up in this house, he'll be able to enjoy the space now that it's clutter free. Oh. Look how cool. <laughs> Today, we have established a safe environment for Roxanne's child. Look, baby. You've got your own room. Look at your crib. You know, it definitely lightens my load. 
you know, that I was carrying around on my shoulders. So you like that, Mom? Ah! Wow, Mom. I wish Mommy was here so she could see this because she would really love it. She would be really ecstatic about it. We're doing some kitchen organizing. Sorry about that. You know, the kitchen is the hub of the house because that's where we do a lot of our socializing, bill paying, studying, and food prep. And the key to conquering the clutter is to create a home or a space designated for specific items. Let's break down some of those kitchen zones, shall we? And remember, you don't have to do all of this at one time. So let's talk about the countertops. Kitchen counters seem to be the drop zone for most folks, leaving little room for that precious food prep. The first step is to create a designated area or zone that you can agree on with the whole family that you keep clear just for food prep. And the secret to conquering clutter in the kitchen is not so much what you put on the counter, but rather how often you clear it. So I want you to be sure to calendar, even on your phone with a reminder, every week to kind of clear that counter and you can stay ahead of the game. What about the pantry? Now, if you're lucky enough to even have a pantry in your kitchen, I want you to utilize these four tips to help you out with space. Number one, empty the pantry out so that you can take an inventory of everything that you have. That means clear out all the shelves and get everything out onto a table. The second thing is to group like items with like items so that you can consolidate, throw things out, even check expiration dates. And you know we do this all the time on The Hoarder Show. Number three, once things are grouped like with like, and if you want to be able to see some of your food items, you can use a simple glass jar like this or hunt around the house and find something else. I actually use my own stained depression glass for lots of food items in my pantry. Number four, you can use an over-the-door shoe organizer. Whoa, that is if you have a door and you have space to do this. But these shoe organizers actually have some plastic clear mm, pockets so that you can put food items in there and you can see everything that you've got. Plus, your family knows where to put things away when it's kind of empty. So it's a great little tool to save space. And if you don't want to use it for food, you can also use it for cleansers and things like that. Now, I'll finish with a couple of other tips for space saving in your kitchen. And I like to use this cardboard magazine holder. I use it for everything all over the house. In this case, I took the magazines out and I put the saran wrap, the tin foil, the baggies, in and it holds everything up straight. It's super neat. Everybody can find it. You don't have to pull one off of the other and it stores easily on a shelf. The other thing that I like to do is use a Lazy Susan. You know how you put spices on a spinning spice rack? Well, it's called a Lazy Susan and you can use that in the fridge. That way when someone's saying, hey, honey, I don't see the mustard in here, you can say, just spin the Lazy Susan and you'll be able to find it. So here's to an organized kitchen and good luck. I want them to be kept together. If you will let me help you, this will get done. Okay. Oh, sh I see a person who might not be alive one day because of this home. You're sleeping in a car. You're kind of homeless, really. I'm being told I'm doing it wrong. No, I, no just, I, I just don't see what's going. You just put it in any old way. No, and face. The way my mom gets most of her stuff is she steals it. Your actions have trained them to think that you're keeping things. You do not get to touch them! Of all things to take, sort of the ultimate insult.
My name is Arlene. I'm 66 years old. I am a retired case manager for the state of Hawaii. I define myself as being nitpicky, perfectionist. And if someone were to see what was in my house, they would seriously doubt it. I'm a product of World War II. I was born in the middle of the blackouts, and at that time, everybody was asked to conserve everything. The rest of my family, not too many of them were affected by it. I think I was probably the only one that um, kind of like got affected by conserving and you know, saving things for later and all that. It's just something that kind of like a snowball. It just kept rolling and rolling and picking things up as it went. It is not my nature to let things like this happen. It's just over a period of times, it got worse and worse and worse, and it got to the point where I just kind of give up. My name is Richard, and I'm Arlene's husband. I recently had prostate surgery. The next problem I have is scoliosis. It's gotten pretty severe. I can't really stand up straight. We only have enough space in the house right now for Arlene to sleep. I can't even sleep here anymore. He just kind of like got squeezed out and uh, it's almost at the point where I think I'm gonna wind up sleeping in my car. My name is Melissa, and I am Arlene's daughter. When I first found out that my dad was sleeping in the car, I was angry. Every time I think of him climbing in the car, going to sleep, it upsets me, it frustrates me. It's just not right. My name is Billy, and I'm Arlene's son-in-law. Melissa told me uh, that growing up, her mom had a lot of stuff kind of conflicted with life, never had friends over. So I kind of drew a picture from that. It didn't really start getting too bad until she was in the intermediate school. She never could bring her friends home because things were starting to pile up. Sometimes Melissa was uh, a little upset about uh, the, the way things were piling up. Growing up in that house was very difficult for me. I had a very small, very small little place on the floor to play and that space eventually was taken over by things. Every Christmas we tried to get a Christmas tree, a very small one that would go on the top of a card table. And as I got older and things accumulated, it was harder and harder to get one. That was always painful. You know, it was always tears and fighting and just to get a Christmas tree. We've been married 40 years now, so it's been about 38 years worth of accumulation. I guess we've been together an awfully long time, and uh, I think we tend to get on each other's nerves a lot. Pick that up, put it over there. Yeah, okay, but you know, it should be there in the first place. If that doesn't fall down again, I'd lose it. Where the hell is a mail basket? What? Richard gets kind of um, annoyed because things fall down on us. If this stuff starts to fall, it's all over. Because of the way it's stacked, it can't be so really solid. So things are going to fall all the time. I actually had a conversation with my mom. I pointed out the fact that he's had these medical procedures done recently, and he's your husband. How, how can you do this to him? How are you OK with this? I, I do really feel for what he has to go through. I feel frustrated because, you know, all this time we haven't been able to do too much about it. Many people have offered to help, my dad and I included. We've tried to clean the house up in the past. Okay, let's just get a big dumpster and just get everything and dump it. I can't do that. I just cannot do that.
I'm Carolyn, and I'm a home health care assistant. I am definitely a hoarder. There's no question about it. I've let it get completely out of hand. There's stuff in the hallways. There's stuff on the stairwells. There's stuff everywhere. I've been able to sleep in the smaller bedroom in the back, but I have to climb over things in the hallway to come down to the bedroom. My name is Melissa, and Carolyn is my mom. There is about one path in her house from the doorway to the couch. And if you go anywhere else in the house, you have to climb over something. My name is Austin, and Melissa is my mom, and Carolyn is my grandma. Even though the living room is a mess, the kitchen just is insane. The stink is just horrible because there's rotten stuff just all over the place. Unfortunately, the way my mom gets most of her stuff is she steals it. I've caught her stealing stuff from us. Family members have caught her stealing stuff from them. Friends have caught her stealing stuff. We've caught her at the store stealing stuff. She just has to take things. We are to the point that yes, we're ready to press charges and say, we're done. You can't continue this anymore. Half the stuff she gets are not always hers. Like blankets of mine and blankets of my brother's. She'll take them and we'll find them in the house or we'll find them in her truck and she doesn't really have a reason to why she took them. If we know she's gonna be coming over to our house, anything that we don't want taken, we lock up in our safe. I don't say that I don't have things here that are theirs. There probably are things that are theirs. There may be things that I've had that I don't even know that I've got. She's supposed to be there to love and guide you and it's almost a role reversal to where almost teach her again what's right and wrong. <laughs> my name is Tim. Melissa is my wife, and Carolyn is my mother-in-law. One time we went into a restaurant and ate and we left. Well, Grandma had taken the bowl that they serve and put it inside the styrofoam pack. And she took it outside and Austin opened it up and Austin's like, <laughs> Grandma, this isn't your bowl. What are you doing with it? We kind of laugh about it. Otherwise, we'd probably cry. I was always a hoarder, but I think when my husband was alive, he kind of coached me to try and keep things up better. And if I couldn't do it, then he helped me. Once he was gone, I kind of gave up. I loved him very much. and. I acquired a lot more things after he passed away because I felt like that kind of filled the void. My name is Mike and Carolyn's my mom. My dad would have an answer for all this, I'm sure. And we just load everything up and take it and junk it. I feel sad that my hoarding has caused so many problems in my family. You shouldn't have to watch your parents or your family members because you're afraid they're going to take something from your house. She's already violated our trust in taking things. At Thanksgiving, I told her, you're like cancer. I have to cut you out. I think I need to be able to remove what has to be removed and sort what has to be kept and decide where they're going to go. Hello, Orlean. I'm Hi. Dr. Chabot. Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Suzanne Chabot, and I specialize in hoarding and OCD. I'm a very small person, and I'm having some difficulty getting through here. My husband has a big problem. She created a home that is totally unsuitable for human life. This is not a home. 
This is an accident waiting to happen. Oh no. What happened? I think we're, oh sh I'm worried it's gonna get worse, Arlene, because this is gonna start coming down. When, when things like this happen, do you feel like it's your fault? Nope. Whose fault is it? It's mm -hmm. gonna happen, it happens. And nothing I can do about that. Mm -hmm. Don't touch anything, don't let it fall. It's very sad that no one can live in this house with Arlene. I don't know how Arlene lives in the house, but her husband, during the day, he goes to the library. He returns to his car at night. He is getting older. What is his future? I have a chair that Richard can actually sit on. Mm -hmm. and he uh, actually comes in here? Yeah, he has a hard time now because things have gotten very crowded and tight in here. Uh huh. But he, he usually... Where uh, does he sit? Right here, I have a, an office chair that I fitted for him. Or my, my sleeping area is this very tiny spot Where right it? here. It's, uh, How would you describe it? About one and a half feet by four feet, probably. Uh huh. It's, it's a small area, and uh, I have to sleep with my knees up. Arlene, I, I must be honest with you. This home frightens me. I believe with my whole heart that you have a disorder and that you need help. And it scares me to see any human live in a house like this. Arlene is not the kind of person who says, help me, and tries to trust people. She says, if you want to help me, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. And I'm gonna work hard with you and try to respect your things. And at the same time, let's see what's holding you back. There's a condition that you have that causes things like this to happen and you don't fix that in two days. You have attachments to every single thing in this house. If there's one little screw or one little thing in one little container, I don't think that will get very far. For your safety, I see a person who might not be alive one day because of this home. I'm starting to see that the things that just keep piling up don't bring peace or happiness, that only family members can actually bring you that type of thing. Hi, Carolyn. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Dr. David Cutts. I'm happy to meet you. Nice to Come meet on you. in. Okay. I'm Dr. David Cutts. I'm a psychologist and I specialize in obsessive compulsive disorder, which includes hoarding. So what room is this? This is my living room. Okay. It does seem you know, relatively cluttered. I usually have a pathway into it and pathway out. Okay. Caroline is most definitely a hoarder. There's an incredible amount of clutter. My understanding is that she acquires it by, by taking things from other people and stores and and such. She definitely fits criteria as a kleptomaniac. She takes many things that really have no value at all. So this is the space between the kitchen and the back rooms. Right. You've got some pictures of your family on the wall. Right. Now, would you say that your family is the primary motivation for taking care of this? Like getting they through are. it? Okay. This is the reason I have wanted to do this. Okay. I have nine grandsons and a granddaughter. Okay hoarding will always affect family members. It affects their ability to come over to that person's home. It affects the ability of the person to come over to other family members' homes. Children and grandchildren probably Wouldn't don't come in. Come. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. okay. I go to their homes once in a while, but they don't frequent here. Okay, well, that must be tough. I mean, that must be. It is, it's yeah. hurtful. All right, so it looks like this is kind of the Epicenter. It is. Yeah. The kitchen is where the smell is the worst of any place in the house. My refrigerator hasn't been accessible for a long time, and so there's been food in there for several long time. Okay. About how long do you think? I'm not positive. So it hasn't been opened or anything? No. Is that something that at some point would be okay to do? Um, I guess at this point I would be kind of anxious about that. 
I think we're gonna find over the next few days layers that get peeled off. And once her anxiety starts increasing, it's gonna be much more complicated than whether she can just let go of her things. She's gonna have to work through a lot of different psychological issues. You can watch more Hoarders episodes every Sunday morning this month starting at 7 a.m. on A&E. The object is to get done and to get in there and, you know, be able to sleep at night. I'm hoping we can get all that done, but I, I really don't know. Okay, we're here to clean this house. I'm Matt Paxton, I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. You know, we were called to make it safe for your husband, but quite honestly, I think it needs to be safer for both of you. Normally, we have a lot of rules and we tell people how it's gonna go. I've got a hunch that's not gonna work in this situation. We talked about higher goals. Yeah. Is safety something that is important to you? Uh, yeah, very much so. What do you wanna say to her directly to her? What? Uh, don't be afraid to throw stuff out. All right, family over here, what do we want to think? I want to see my dad sleeping in the house again. I want to see my parents married 40 years to sleep in the same bed. What is the right way to clean your home? Um, I guess the suggestion is just bring the thing out and I'll try to make a decision okay. right then. We have got to get working, guys. So I think on three, we're going to do a little uh, a pep thing. Instead of uh, three cheers, we can just say banzai three do you, times. What do you nice do with your hands? You can do that. OK, ready? Let's go. Banzai! Banzai! Right, and Banzai! Alright, let's do it. The reality is, you can see, like literally see how bad this is. Yeah. Okay, stuff's gonna fall non-stop on us. This house is extremely dangerous and that's why we're here. This was the living room. Um, is that, the kitchen? that was the kitchen. <laughs> this is like way, way, way worse than I could have imagined it would ever get. But why did you keep acquiring stuff when there was no room to begin with? I mean, the only thing that has been acquired in there are the boxes to replace other boxes. I'm just, I'm horrified. <laughs> okay, that's the key. Let's keep moving. I've got a box of empty tea. Boxes. I, I'm always looking for things to wrap gifts in, and I, I can never find. That's why I get little boxes and more boxes. I, I think that there's like millions of little boxes in there that you could use, get you know, let go of some of them. Arlene, as we going through this process, balance your thoughts with safety. All these items put together equal a hoarded house. The way she thinks, the way she makes decisions. Everything is consistent with compulsive hoarding. This is going awfully slow, and, uh, you oh, no know. crap. We got a lot of stuff. You know. This is going really slow because I'm trying to be respectful of what you want to keep. Do you think you're going to reach your goal of creating space in your home? Not if I have to keep on making decisions. Well, who's going to make the decisions? I feel like the decisions are being made for me. Then. So maybe we shouldn't ask you anything and just let things come before you. Do you want to do this by yourself? I don't know. No, you're not. You're not going to. You can't just do it. Just let them help you, please. I don't have any choice, you know? If you didn't have any choice, though, these trucks would be filled and they'd be gone by now and the house would be empty. You know, we wait, we move just enough stuff to, to open the front door. That's not even close to you know what we were hoping to accomplish today. I'm letting go a lot more than I would have. You think you know? so? Yes, I am. OK. Well, we, we haven't let go of anything, though. There's right. nothing in the trash truck at all. If I could just say where I wanted to go for right now, it would go a lot okay. faster. OK. Well, I think Alrighty. then we need to back off. So you have a chance now to see what you can do. I have no role here. This is office supplies. This is office supplies. Hold this over there because I, I'm going to okay. need those later. OK, now, someplace I'm going to have to have a very large area for flowers. This is one of those jobs where there's really no good way to look at it. We want to clean the entire house, and we've barely gotten the front door open. You've got the best help in the world sitting in front of you, and we're taping boxes. The things you're keeping, 
I mean, do you, would you even notice if they were gone, some of them? This is trash. What can the people in your life give you who love you? This is about changing life themes. Can she let other people help her? Hoarding is her work, and she will work and work and work at it all by herself. I that. I'm being told I'm doing it wrong. No, I, just, I that. just don't see what's going. Look in that truck right there. That's what's leaving. That's it. Can you find just one thing that you could take a risk with? You want me to go look for something now? All right, I'll look for something now. Go. So. What is this? So the children's craft supplies. OK, so guys, craft supply box. No, I want them to be kept together, and that's why I'm trying to find something to put it in. It's a group together. If you will let me help you, this will get done. All right, so I won't be able to find what I need. Just, just put it in any old way. So all of this is more important than your husband having I a place to sleep? I don't know. I told you what you need to do to get better. Go find something that's of some value and say, let this go. That could be what marks the rest of this process for you. I did say in the very beginning that um, what I decided to keep or to throw or what has to be my decision. Uh, tonight, I will still be sleeping in the car, obviously. There's still not uh, room to put a bed. I feel sad that my hoarding has caused so many problems in my family. I'm ready to turn over a new leaf. Everybody. Hello. <laughs> I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert and I specialize in hoarding. Here's what I plan to accomplish the whole house. Who thinks we can do it? I guess. All right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pretty squalid odor in the home. I can smell it from the curb when I walk up. We're starting in the kitchen because that is what I believe to be the most difficult place. Yes. Let's go in straight to the kitchen. Yes. I say the criteria is clear all this. Oh, wow. Is that great that your mother just says, Oh yeah. get rid of oh, it all? Yeah. I am completely shocked that how good she's doing. You are throwing your stuff away. I understand. What's that like? It's what more are you important thinking? that I have a family. It's more important you have a family. She's not running away. I, it really is the first time that I've seen a hoarder get into the thick of it and work like crazy. What wow. great work you're doing. <laughs> and I am absolutely elated. Tell me how your mother did. Awesome. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Jeff Fremont, hi. This is my class ring from 20 years ago. I didn't think I'd ever find it again. You think your mom was hiding it and holding on to it because maybe she wanted the memories? I think she was. Ah, I would have given it to him years ago had I known it was there. When you tell me, I totally believe you. You might be safe keeping it and holding it because it's a great memory for your son or for yourself. But you know what? Your actions have trained them to think that you're keeping things. To keep it. To purpose. keep it. Because you either take it or keep it oh, because that's who you are. She lied. She flat out lied. She told me that she did not take my aunt's genealogy. And she flipping, it's right there. Carolyn took some genealogy papers from family members. You know, their religion, I believe they're Mormon. I think it was just a, of all things, to take sort of the ultimate insult. You lied to me. What did I say? 
You said you didn't have the genealogy. You never took the genealogy. You didn't have it. And that file folder that was there, that's what it was. I only have the genealogy that I'm supposed to have. You have the originals. You steal from me! You steal from Mike! You steal from your brothers and sisters! I'm tired of it! I love you and I want you to get help! Don't you get that? I want you well, to you get, go get help! Get papers and let's look and see what they are. <sighs> just go get them. Let's just, let's get the papers and look and see what they are. That's fine, but I was I explaining, I was explaining something else to you, and all you can care about is those damn papers. Okay. all right. I'll make the copies of them, and then I'll get the out of your life. I woke up this morning and I was also a little frustrated. What I keep coming back to is that you're sleeping in a car. <laughs> you know, you're kind of homeless, really. You Virtually, don't eat here, I mean... you sleep in a car, and you go to a library all day. What I need to know is do you really want to be back in that house with oh, Arlene? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We've got a TV in there buried hmm. under something. So, so we, we could watch TV and go to bed. That'd be great. <laughs> It seems like your family's pretty hopeful that you guys had a nice night last night, well, and they were so pleased. We had a little while together after They were so she... pleased. Should they feel hopeful? I think so. I think mm -hmm. we could finish. I, I really do. You have changed since yesterday, and that is awesome. Um, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking today. I think we need to clean. Is that a go-through? Yeah. Take that out. Go through. And we're, we're getting further down into the bottom piles. Yeah. There's a lot of rodent activity. If it's half eaten by mice, can we get rid of it? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Yesterday, she was just defending her turf. You know what I'm saying? Herself. Now she's defending herself. It's a whole different day. This is the most space that's been in the house in 10 years. I mean, this is, unfortunately, it's not a place you can, like, put a bed or a family. This is a white box that's been here for 20, 30 years. This is all poop. That's probably all expired. Yeah, yeah these have uh, to go. 2001. I don't have any choice. I can't get, I cannot get my prescription. Two, uh, 2002. Using expired medication can be, very, can, can be dangerous, and it's usually not worth the risk. Could you trust your daughter to go through medicines and expiration dates and... Yeah, but I do need to know what is being well, thrown These are out. empty boxes. Okay. These are empty boxes. There's got to be a little bit more letting go. Do if I keep now. on stopping now, I'm never going to get done. If they say, what about this? And you say, put it over there. I'll check it later. That's an extra step. It'll no. be too late. It'll be 5 o'clock. So shall I just leave the bundle to you two to make all the decisions and dump everything? Please Same. tell me to throw everything away a third time. I'll do it. I want to get this guy a bed. Period. Yeah, that's the most important. If you want me to throw everything away, I will do it. I don't think you would miss this stuff, Mom. You, you haven't seen it for years. Because there's a lot of stuff in there, Mom. But I'm wondering if there's anything in there that you trust me that that, that I would make a good decision on. Well, all this is, this, this is completely Do you hear Everything suggestion? out of my head. Why? What's wrong? Because I'm moving along, and then I have to stop, stop, stop. Mom, you're stopping yourself, and we're still stopped. She'll never have this opportunity again to create a safe place for them to live in. What are, what are you feeling right now? What are you thinking? I don't think she realizes that she's still not fixing it. She's the one slowing us down. And yeah. I, I don't want to take it out of her hands, but I feel like we have to at this point. Do you realize that this is, this is like a disorder that can kill people in some circumstances? <sighs> the hardest part of my job is to sometimes go against what I would normally do, but for a greater good. We're leaving today. We have to take urgent measures. Do you think she would trust us? 
to do a bulk of this. My thought, truthfully, is that she's not going to go for that. OK, if, if it was depression and she was suicidal, would put her in a hospital. She has a hoarding disorder that's so severe that she could die from it. And you could, too. <laughs> So this is, this is a, a critical moment in terms of, of family intervention. We can replace things. We cannot replace them. Yes, that's so important. I, I hate to be pessimistic, but it's just, she's going to go. This is the original. This is our okay. copy. Okay. Well, I didn't know that I had this genealogy. So she thinks that you took them. I didn't know I had the original copy of the genealogy. You can don't... see exactly what it is. Right, right. And it's I the understand. genealogy that right. they've been looking for. Right. There's some with holes punched in it right there, which tells me those are flipping originals. My mom took them and and it's because that's... Let's see for just a sec. You do not get to touch them. You steal them. Okay. You're a thief. This is what my mother sent me. No, this isn't. Your copies I've seen. When I you, I was a little girl, they came in a manila or a and clasp I envelope. Them. I have not left them in the clasp envelope. These are the things that I have had. I think, <laughs> I mean, I think that this is something that in, in a few days, in a few weeks, can be something that can help you grow and help you move forward. But it is important to see how painful it is. Carolyn put it best that she feels like an onion that's being peeled and peeled, and now she's kind of at the part where it makes you cry. And I think that's the case for the whole family. I love you so much, and you don't show me. Get it. I love you, too. <laughs> they need to let all the anger out, they need to yell at each other, they need to cry, they need to hug each other. I mean, all of that. Maybe in one more group hug with you guys, okay? We'll get in here. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's move on with this, okay? okay. Is this all key? This is throwaway. Oh, okay. This is a bag that's throwaway. Don't mix, no, don't mix it up and put good stuff in bags or else it'll get accidentally thrown out. It's going way too fast. Okay, do you want to just it's like, hold you know, up for a second? It's like, okay, well, you know, can I see this stuff? No, I can't see it. I, it's just going. Carolyn does have a lot of anxiety. I think she's controlling it a lot. Um, whether that's good or not, I think is debatable. You're OK. You're OK. If you need to stop and say stop for a minute, just say stop. If it's going too fast, just say we need to slow down. You got to voice it, or else they're not going to know. All right, shot. can I do this right now? We yep. her yes. If we nope, do this, we her. Matt, if we do this, you think we'll make it? Yes. OK. All right. I, I look, I'll stay till it's dark, if that's what it means. I'm willing to pay the price if, if it goes wrong, but something had to change. Hey, Mom. I just love being talked over. What really? do you think we were talking about? I don't know. Um. If things continue the way that they're going, I'm really concerned for what happens when we leave. I really want to go in there, and, and I really just want to, to blast the place and, and get rid of a lot and not bring it past this table. If I get rid of $100,000 worth of stuff that you could use, I will spend the rest of my life rebuying it for you, but I can't replace you. And I'm terrified I'm going to lose you. So are you willing to let me just get rid of a lot of stuff in your house. Go ahead. It's just, you know. Okay. Okay. It's. Okay. It's, we'll check in with you from time hands. to time, okay? Hey, guys. How you doing? Uh, I just got done kind of talking to Arlene about some things. And uh, uh, she's kind of giving us carte blanche to just clean. Things that you'd put in a house, we want to keep. Everything else, guys, until she says stop, just go.
I knew what was coming. That was a big decision, Arlene. Yes. Very, very brave. Arlene decided that it was time to let go and trust. She knew deep inside herself she could not make those decisions quick enough to save her family. You're standing on the floor. You realize no one has stood on that floor in 40 years. 40 years. What do you think? Oh, I love it. I think it's it's the last time you thought you'd have a bed. <laughs> It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. So it's new. We got you some new sheets, new pillows. Good. So <laughs> you're sleeping in a bed tonight. All right. Wow. This is amazing. Never thought I would see the walls of that room. It's always, always been cluttered. Oh, boy. Look at that. Wow. Well, you feel good about it? I guess so, yeah. We got floor. That, that's important, we got floor. <laughs> and we got room to move around. The queen, we've never had a queen either. Look at that. Which side do you want? <laughs> we haven't made as much progress as I would have liked to make. We haven't even touched any other rooms besides this first one, but at least my dad is out of the car now. You have your view back, Mom. Yeah, you have your view, Mom. Yes. Why you Try bought the to house. keep it that way. It's beautiful. I, mean, I trusted Billy's judgment, but um, there were a bunch of things that kind of, it kind of scares me to think what happened. It's beyond comparison. We got this room cleared, part of the kitchen, and we have a bed to sleep in now. It's terrific. Today's activity, we're going to start in the second bedroom. It's also Roger's old office, is that correct? Yes, that's the bedroom, of course, we had. It's the master bedroom. I want you to stand right in here. All right. Find any soft stuff and throw it here. Okay. Keep bagging up the soft stuff. Fast, fast, fast. As fast as we can do it. You want to keep scissors or no? No, throw it. Not salvageable. We're never going to get a girl, but. OK. Get rid of it then. I don't think that's worth no. saving to you. What do those look like on me? Not good? They make your hips a little wide. Too wide. Woo! Was I doing OK? No, you're doing fantastic. Oh. OK does not describe your work. <laughs> Great job. OK, thank you. All right, honey. Genealogy. Part of the blow up yesterday was because of some genealogy books and some originals. And today, another four or five more original books have popped up. We're going to take them and get copies of them. OK. That will be great. The originals of everything in. You're welcome to take them and we'll make copies of them. We'll make photograph albums of them and good for me. I'm all good with it. Okay. Love you and I'm glad we're getting down to the real brass tacks here. I think it's been kind of an eye opener because she's been admitting that, yeah, I take things from you guys. I lie to you guys. And she's told me and my brother that she is sorry. It says, ask Can yourself, you... what have I learned from my experience? <laughs> Appropriate card, wouldn't you say? <laughs> There is such a big difference for Carolyn from how she was yesterday to today. We're gonna throw these cans out. They're not gonna be any good. All right. Not you. <laughs> today, she was ringing a cowbell. She was playing. She was throwing stuff onto the truck. She has totally transformed her behavior. What about this? It can go. This can be thrown out. One, two, three, here we go. Get 
get rid of it. Oh, oh, look at that, guys. How's that look? Oh. <laughs> so do you, do you get that we cleared the clutter so that other things, Can human be beings, important. could actually fit in? Exactly. The best blessing I have is my family. Pretty soon you can come to my house and maybe even spend a night sometime with Grandma. How would that be? Yeah. Because yeah, I'd love that. All right. With the proper support from her family and from professionals and, and with the right frame of mind, I think she can do well. And she's taken the first step. I mean, without a doubt, I have to give her that credit. I've gained a better understanding of what I have done that has hurt me. And so, so I promise them that I will, will not take their things. I don't want the grandkids to have that problem. I don't want them to think, oh, Grandma's just going to come and take something of ours. I don't want that ever to be a feeling. I don't want them to have that fear from me. She says she's willing to change. And I really hope that she can do it, that she can rebuild the trust and, and have you know what she wants as far as family and everything else. <laughs> Now you mix me all up. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Hey, Woo! Is that a smile on your face or what? Yep, I'm pretty happy, pretty tickled to see the family around. comment that I hear from my clients all the time is, Dorothy, I don't have enough time to get organized. And well, even though most of us do have some time to get organized right now, maybe we're still not wanting to do it. And where there's one flame, there's usually another one right around the corner. And what I mean is, if you don't have time to get organized, you may also not have time to exercise, you may not have time to make a dental appointment, pay your bills, grab lunch, things like that. So usually if we're screaming out, I don't have time to get organized, it could mean that something else is going on. So before we even begin to search for minutes and moments to get organized, we need to see whether or not we, you, might be overcommitted. And that usually means not being able to say no. Or you may be working too many hours. And that could mean you're not using your voice to speak up and you wish you could. Or you might be losing time to escapist activities like reading, playing video games, or binge watching. Never mind. No marathons going here. <laughs> so, <clears throat> where do we begin when you don't have a spare minute? I say start by waving your, your magic wand, which, in case you've misplaced it, is located near or at your calendar because you alone have all the power of Glenda the Good Witch, and it's up to you to review your day and create some spare minutes. You've got a couple of ways to do this. One is the organize as you go approach, and the other one is the single priority approach. So let's start with the organize as you go approach. Wherever you are, you can task yourself with what's kind of disorderly or disorganized around you. For example, if you're waiting to pick up your husband or wife from work, you can reach over to the glove compartment, pull everything out, sort like with like, pull out the pens and the papers that shouldn't belong or should be tossed, and bang, you suddenly have organized your glove compartment in the car. Another example is maybe you're brushing your teeth in the morning. I hope so. But you're brushing your teeth and you put the uh, <clears throat> toothpaste right on your toothbrush and before you start the actual brushing, you might want to unload one little drawer or part of a drawer or part of a shelf and just take the things that don't belong and run them to the rooms where they do belong. And that way you're organizing, you get that done, 
and you finish brushing your teeth, you kind of tuck it in between the whole brushing your teeth experience and your bathroom just got organized. The other approach is the single priority approach. How do you do this one? Well, you decide exactly on one organizing task that you want to accomplish and you set an appointment for it. Yeah, actually in your calendar and decide the amount of time you want to allot yourself and set a timer too. You see, if you've, you see, if you've, you see, if you've got 17 minutes before you leave for dinner with your daughters or your spouse, then you have 17 minutes to do some little bit of organizing. And here are some things you could do. You could eliminate outdated coupons from your phone or envelope in your purse, review nail polishes, you could survey and organize the spice rack, and you can also head to the tool bench in the garage and start organizing your tools there. Take whatever amount of time you have and just get started. Good luck. Somewhere along the line, I got the idea that it just wasn't gonna clean up. Hoarding has destroyed your family, mama. It has destroyed your family. He just got fed up and left. It was a police search, I had him on the news, no nothing. If he's planning on going, then he can get out of his family. That's how I feel. I'm supposed to just hold yeah, my crew and you walked here. away from me. Uh, oh, don't uh, blame this on me. No, I'm not blaming you, hello? You brought uh, these Marty, people in here to man. shame me. My name is Claudie, and I'm 58 years old. When I met Jim, believe it or not, it was on Valentine's Day in 1971. Seemed like it was like love at first sight, and it seemed like he was just everything that I looked for out of a guy. You know, somebody real respectful and loving and kind. I'm Jim. I'm Claudia's husband, and I'm 72 years old. When I met Claudia, she had two kids. I loved them. I wanted to become part of her life, and I did marry Claudia. And we made 10 kids together. So in all, we have 12 children. Back when all the children were living at home, we accumulated quite a bit of things. I'm Renee, I'm 27, and I'm Claudie's daughter. Over the years, she would bring in things and not throw away anything, so things started accumulating rapidly. I remember there were padlocked doors with junk behind them because she said that she didn't want us to go in and steal anything. My kids would think a lot of my collectibles was garbage because it's garbage to them. They Naturally, they don't think like I do. She was thinking that we were stealing items. Like, are you kidding? We're not touching your things, lady. This stuff is junk. Let's burn it. I'm Ariana, I'm 19, and I'm Claudia's youngest daughter. If we try to clean up or remove anything, throw anything in the garbage, my mom would get hysterical. My room started getting junky and stuff, and I try to organize, and she'd get mad and tell me don't touch her stuff, but it's my room. So it was like she took a possession over my room. So then after a while, I just couldn't take it anymore. So I moved out and moved to Myra's house at the age of 13. I'm Myra, I'm 25 years old, and I'm Claudia's daughter. 
When Ariana moved in, it was a struggle because I didn't have, you know, a sets of food in my home to feed or, or the money that I would need to, you know, actually financially take care of her. And I just kind of had to work extra hours just to take care of my sister and my daughter. My name is Kathleen and I'm 41 years old and I'm Claudia's daughter. My mom and daddy used to argue a lot about stuff. He'd be like, Claudia, you know we need to get rid of this. Um, stuff is piling up. Claudia would be gone. Oh, here's my chance here now. My father, he said, kids, we're going to clean up the house. And this was like a liberating day for us. So we like putting everything in trash bags. And wow, we had pretty much got it organized. And my mother came in and saw. <laughs> when Claudia get back. Oh, she was just really, really getting very mad. She went in the rampage. She tore the bags back open and threw everything back where it had been. I'd get the meeting, you know, verbally. She says, well, you started getting rid of some of this stuff. Oh, the next time you do it, I'm gonna put the police on you. Huh? Oh, yeah, I had to talk to them too about this hoarding. Give me a break, would you? A lot of times the cops would come to our house because my mom didn't want to get rid of anything. Nothing would move. I just had it. Ooh, we, I had it. He said, okay, I'm just out of here. You know, he'll just leave, go for a ride or walk or just go in the backyard and fill around with stuff. Well, you just take a hike for a minute, you know, time out. So I did. didn't know what happened. There was a police search. They had them on the news every night and so forth, billboards, flyers and everything. No nothing. The last day that I seen him, we got up that morning and we talked. He said, see you later. And I said, okay, I'll be waiting on you. I waited all the rest of the day for him to show back. He didn't show back. I called him, I said, oh, what, honey, what's wrong? What happened? Why you didn't come back home? How did you wind up way out in Las Vegas? I said, you are my life. I can't go on without you. He said, you must go on without me. And he said, I'm getting a divorce. I said, divorce for what? He kept telling me, I want you to clean this house. I'm used to being here with my husband. I love him so much and I can't live without him. I've been with him for 37 years. I don't know if I can go on. I live in a homeless shelter in the downtown area of Peoria. I've had a couple of my daughters to offer me to come home with them. And I told them that wouldn't be a good idea because I wouldn't really want to be a burden on them. It was sad that my mother ended up in a shelter. I offered her, you know, to stay with me and she told me, no, you know, she's fine. Don't worry about her. She'll, she'll be okay. She'll manage. It hurts me so much that my mother is in this facility. I question, how did we all get to this point? My mom can only live at the shelter for one year, period. So she only have a year in here. Only a year, and her year is about up. Her year is about up. So we gotta move fast. Get that crap out of there and get her back in the house. And if daddy wanna come home, come home. I do believe that uh, 
there's a big chance of me coming back, you see, and she would uh, get her head together, you see. Mm -hmm. I do believe it's a good chance, yeah. My mother's hoarding has destroyed this family. We're at a crisis point because my father wants to go home, we want our family back together, and my mom's on the street. We have to do something immediately. I think mama is in denial of being a hoarder because she feel that nothing's wrong with her wanting to keep all this stuff and keep all these memories and stuff. She don't see anything wrong with it. This is my stuff. Why are you bothering me? Why do you want me to get rid of my stuff? It's none of your business. Just leave me alone. Somewhere along the line, I got the idea that he just wasn't going to clean up. Vanish? Yes. From the face of the earth. <laughs> and that's what I did. Vanished. I'm hurt. When he asked me to marry him, he got down on his knees and asked me to be his wife. And he promised me he would never leave me alone and lonely. I would try to figure out my life what I'm going to do, which way I'm going to go. Maybe I probably can start something for myself. The feelings that have been bottled up are hurt, shame, anger. Oh, man. It feels like this has been a catastrophe. This is it. This is it. Hello, Claudie. Hi. How are you? It's nice to finally meet you, Dr. Robin Zazio. My name is Dr. Robin Zazio. I'm a clinical psychologist, and I specialize in obsessive compulsive disorder and compulsive hoarding. Thanks for having me over. OK. <laughs> when I met Claudie to do the walkthrough, we were surprised to find that Jim was here at the house. And this was the first time that Claudie had seen Jim in 13 months when he packed up and left without any warning. How, how are you feeling seeing Jim here after all this time? Real good. You are? Mm -hmm. Back home. Yeah. <laughs> you want a hug? Would you like to have a hug? Yes, I'll hug you. You would? Aww. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Stop right here? Yeah, so I guess, Claudia, why don't you tell me about this room? We used to sleep in this room. This was our bedroom. Okay. We started sleeping over there and took this for more or less a junk room. I see. Your children had talked about a time when I think all, all of the family tried to start getting rid of some of their clothes mm -hmm. and such. And at one point, there were locks on the doors to prevent them from getting it. Do you remember that? They, uh, I would ask them to help me, mm -hmm. and they would take my good things and the bad things and just take okay. everything and get it up. Okay. The house that Claudia is trying to restore is basically falling apart. There are ceilings that look like there's been water coming through. We're going to have to remove the stove, the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that is. I'm just not sure that Claudie fully understands the magnitude of the condition that this house is in currently. Is this organ going to stay in here? Oh, this is the grand here. Is it going to stay in the kitchen? Oh, no. No. No, it's just in the way now. It's in the way now. Okay. But it was going to be moved, you know, at one time. Yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm just wondering what's what's going on now that the two of you are in this room together after not being here for so long in the condition of this house, what this feels like for you. I'm really hurt. Total shock that he just got up and walked out my life like that. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the Lord, I probably would have lost my mind because I've been with him for 38 years. And he has never walked hey. off and left hey, me. Over here. Never. Over you know, 38 years is a long history. Yeah, jump out of somebody's life, huh? So you got some tears going on there, too. Yeah, it's, it just, uh, I guess I've been a louse, you know, to vanish, you know. Makes me feel bad. I, I wonder how I got the nerve to vanish. Now I feel like, oh, you, you should have did that, you know. Mm -hmm. Have, have you heard these words from her? I mean, did you know how, how badly she's been suffering? No, I did not. I, I'm curious, did you just get so overwhelmed that you didn't know what to do, which is one of the reasons yeah. why you bolted? Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's been carrying the load now by herself? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like a heel, you know, but sorry about that. Does that mean, Jim, that you are going to stay here and live with Claudie? Yes, it does, but we have some other issues, mind issues, you know. We're looking at physical issues. We have some mind issues we need to clear up also. Okay. How does that make you feel to hear that from Jim? <laughs> He's not telling the whole story. Mm. 38 years? Yeah. 12 children, 22 yeah. grands. How could you just get up one day and just walk out of my mm. life like that? How yeah, I wish and I why? Could Claudie's current state of mind is that she is not feeling real hopeful about what's to come. And although he's promised that he is going to stay, she's quite skeptical that he will honor that promise. I think she's really scared about the future, and I think that she has reason to be. If I get the house clean, I'm not really sure if he will come back. I would be glad to have him back and we get our family back like it once was. You can watch more Hoarders episodes every single Sunday this month at 7 a.m. on A&E. You cover for your parents. Like, this is a secret, but it's no longer a secret. I, I want people to know about this disorder and what it does to families. It's, it's an atrocity. It's very hard. It's very shameful. On the other hand, I'm upset because my husband could have gave me more help. Instead, he just threw his hands up and ran. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Darnita L. Payton, Life Management Specialist, and I work with the Chronically Disorganized and Cluttered. Thank you all for braving zero temperatures to be here today. I just have a few ground rules that I ask that you all follow. Claudia has expressed a desire to make sure that none of her children are alone in any of the rooms. She believes that um, in the past, they've taken things without her permission. So we're asking that you not sneak anything out of the doors or throw anything out of the window without her giving us the okay to do that. We're building trust here. We want to make sure that we keep her trust. And the quickest way for the process to stop is if she stops believing that we're going to take care of her things. All right, are we ready to get started? Okay, oh, let's go. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Take one of the bins here oh, okay. and make that a picture bin. Okay. Very good. Does she want to keep these things or not? We, we need to ask her. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. We'll set it in the other room. And just cover it with mold. Do we dare to go through it? Oh, because of the. Let it go. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. All right, all right. That was. That oh, the cleanup yeah. is going very well. It's going better than I thought it would. It, everything is going well. My mom is saying yes to a lot of things that I thought she was going to say no to. 
Everything is trash in this building. I'm not trying to donate. No. I don't want to see a surface anymore. Thank you. Okay, so Woo! trash. Woo! 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 Dad, he's down in the basement. He's saying, yes, yes, get rid of it. It's trash, just trash it. So everything's going great. Oh, I'm working my buns off. Uh-huh. Adult Bible class, Jim. Oh, yeah, I studied that one time. <laughs> <laughs> just one time? <laughs> Having fun, you know. Having fun. <laughs> yeah, me and the guys, you know. <laughs> Yeah. It's just nice to really get down and do some cleaning. I find your good suspenders. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Can I just say it's so great to see. I know this house is far from where it needs to be, but you're back as a family oh, in the home again. It's yeah. really neat. Oh, wow. This is this is good for the family and for her, you know? I mean, it's our mom. We love her. Bye, chair. Bye, chair. Bye. You served them well. You served them well. Everyone seemed to understand and grasp the rules. Um, they've been really good despite the frigid temperatures that we'd have to work in. And quality has been excellent. She's let go of almost everything that we put before her. We're working on our second trash bag. All right, can we get a woohoo for that? <laughs> How is that really watching that? A great relief. It, it is a great relief. <laughs> yeah. Even though in the past that's what was happening that upset you so much. Yes, because uh, my family wasn't taking um, special interest as you guys are. Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 I thought it was gone. Having her husband Jim here has been amazing for her mood. The two of you together, hand in hand, arm in arm. <laughs> Having the daughters here and other family friends has just really lightened things up. Look who's strutting in! Oh, this is not what I expected. I know she's motivated. She wants her family back. I've seen this dozens and dozens of times where they'll say they want the family back, but ultimately, we don't make this kind of progress in, in months and months of, of work. After lunch, Claudie pulled her husband Jim aside to talk with him about whether or not he was planning on coming home and he would not give her an answer. Everything was going smooth up until now. Then my mom and my dad had a discussion and then my mom got pretty upset because she didn't hear what she wanted to hear. What did he say? Um, she came to me very upset feeling like she needed to get an answer from him so that she could figure out how to proceed with this whole cleanup process. He was phony. He's a big pretender. Uh-huh. I went through all this for him. Mm -hmm. He says that I was the fault of this, but I wasn't the fault of all this by myself. He must make a decision today, because he already had one year, two months. Mm -hmm think about everything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not waiting no longer for an answer. Yesterday when we talked, you shared that if the house got cleaned up, you would be back. Mm -hmm. And Claudie asked you today about where you stand with coming back. Mm -hmm. I felt like they were ganging up on me. Sit down over there, buddy. I want a word with you. I knew it was coming, you know. I could feel it, you know. Hey, I feel good about it. And I'd like to continue feeling good all the way through. And I believe you can make me feel good. Couldn't you? This is fake. Huh? We can just square this off right here, right now. Uh, if you intend to come back to me, tear up the doggone uh, uh, divorce papers right now, here and now. 
just what like that. The divorce papers, tear them up. Because if you won't tear them up, and uh, it, you might as well just forget about it. And you turn this house over to me. I can go on. This is where we're at. I, I'm not here to... Be a marriage counselor. To be your marriage therapist, yeah, right? And normally I would not have these kinds of conversations yeah. because I'm really here to help you deal with yeah. other issues, which is mm -hmm. the cluttering, the hoarding, yes. and so forth. But part of what's come up is that these issues are overlapping yeah. with what we're trying to do here in the house. And Claudia is having a lot of anxiety. She's feeling like she wants some answers. And so we're just trying to, to work with both of you to, to help figure out where things are going to go from here. Mm -hmm. I was on, on, on the impression when you came back, you was coming home to me. Now this divorce, is it still on or is it off? Well, I hope that uh, I could take it off, you know? You hope you could? Yeah, but at this, point, you back? at this point, it seems like uh, I don't have a, no choice, you know? I love her, even unconditionally, you know? That's how bad I am about it. But right now, you, you can see how she is, you know? I mean, you know, I'm just not putting her down or anything of that nature there, you know? I don't want to talk about this no more. Okay, let, let's, let's finish this out. Yeah, see there. See what you're doing. Right, let's okay. Have a seat. Yeah, right. we, we I need... want to talk with you. You embarrass me on this. I, I ain't embarrassed. You embarrass me with talk. your bull crap. I you don't talk. know whether you want to be married or not. No, I don't. At this point, see what you're doing? I was supposed to just hold my crew and you walked here. away from me the 13, going... 14 months ago. Just walked away. The camera's rolling. I don't care set. about no cameras rolling. What you going to do? I... Are you willing to tear them up? Yeah, what I'm talking about. <laughs> I didn't make any plans. Everything. I, she's I, been living in a shelter. Open, she's she's been living in a shelter, and that's it. You the one had the plans. Yes, I still got dreams and plans. Well, do they include me? Sort of. After her conversation with Jim and he was not able to commit to whether or not he would come back to live with her, she got very angry. And I'm through. Y'all can cut this camera. What are you yeah, doing? I'm I'm through. Through. I, yeah, we, we I need to talk with you. She basically left the house stating that she couldn't continue on today. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We are back for day two. It's still cold. <laughs> so we uh, got the morning meeting started without Jim. And Claudia, I'm wondering how you're feeling about that. Mm. A little uh, sad, you know, that he was not here. Just want to let you guys know, I'm here to help you out, talk through some of this stuff, and be available as, as things come up. So is everyone ready to go? Yes! Let's get going. All right. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Uh, Ms. Claudia, yes. I'm giving you your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I think that we have an excellent chance of getting her home back to a livable condition because she's expressed that she really wants her home back and she really wants her family back. Are you going to keep it or are you going to trash it? Mm. I'm afraid to say. I'm going to let it go. You're afraid to say it, but you're going to let it go. Mm -hmm. All right. So she's willing to let go of a majority of the things in the home. Okay. We've already let it go, right? She always try to put me down like I ain't nothing but trash. No, how did I put you down like you was trash, Mom? I'm talking about how, how did this how happen? Did how did this happen? How did it happen? Mama, she ain't the only one said that. All your kids said that. Mama, how I'm embarrassing Talk you? Talking all that crazy talk. How am I embarrassing mm -hmm. you, Mama? And the next time, I'm going to take a sock you with my fist and bust you in your damn mouth. Mama, Mama, what's going on now? Can you get the doctor, please? 
Ladies, needless to say, um, there's a lot of emotions in this family, understandably. And, and I, I want to just have some dialogue about how people are feeling. What are your concerns about things going forward? I'm just a little angry and irritated because how could this have gone so long undetected? This house was not like this when I was living in it. It got like this when I left one year and two, a couple of months ago. So all of this stuff came to this house one year ago. Is that what you're telling me? We had the things in here. They were stacked, neatly tied up in plastic bags. Someone broke in my home two different times, and they took and scattered things. And it just went from room to room, yes. tearing down, yes. looking for money, objects. Yes. She told me that burglars had broke in and went in from room to room, and that wasn't a logical answer that I could believe. Well. I don't care what you can accept. Neighborhood kids came in, they broke in, and scattered things around. Mm -hmm. This is sad that it took this situation for my family to come here. I'm happy that they're here to help because, you know, had they not came here, it would have only just been me and my sister, Jamie, putting up with my mom and... <laughs> you know what? The hoarding needs to be addressed. I don't know if there's people in denial or not, but there was hoarding done in here, and it needs to be addressed. Because despite we cleaning this house up, it can accumulate again. Yeah. So it needs to be addressed. Somebody has an issue, a problem, and it needs to be fixed immediately. Hoarding has destroyed your family, mama. I'm just going to tell you the truth. It has destroyed your family. This is it's not gone. my fault. This is not no, my mama. fault completely. I'm not saying it's your fault. Completely. I'm you, I'm not going to take full you responsibility. You are a team player. Okay, I'm, I'm okay. not going to take full not, responsibility. Not blame me, you. Well, Claudia has flip-flopped. In one moment, she takes responsibility. In another moment, she blames Jim. Another moment, she's blaming it on burglars and thieves. I don't really know where she stands, but when she gets directly confronted by her children, she gets really defensive. Don't blame this on me. No, I'm not blaming you. Hello? Yes, you are. I'm not. You, you say are this a team player. Like, don't holler at hang me, on, ho. Hang on. Hang on one second. No. Hang on one second. So, no. so, hang on one second. You know, they're concerned don't that it's... Don't badger me like this. Name calling mom? Yes, yes. Don't, Body. Hey, don't, don't Body. badger me like Body. that. Body. Don't badger me. Nobody no. is badgering me. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. That's how come you always you walking and tipping around here like a mouse the whole time you was here. You know you Excuse brought me, you I brought these you room out. You brought no, you brought no, these Molly, people in here to no, the, the, uh, to shame me. This is not. I'm oh, not no, gonna no, take no, 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 My husband no, is a no, tramp. No, he no, drug no, in no, most no, of this no, stuff I'm up in here. No. They know what type of people I am. <laughs> All right, no, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 This family has been devastated in terms of the unit by the hoarding. However, what was uncovered was years and years of other emotional baggage that came out in the house cleanup process. The emotions just coming out, you know, people expressing how they feel, yeah. and you know, yeah. I hold back so much, and I never say much, but it's like, now, you know, I'm really upset about all this. I felt like it was a burden on me, just constantly being there for my mother with, you know, little support for my siblings. <laughs> it's all broken up. You and dad not here. My, my other siblings out of state, it's only me and Jamie. It's like, what's next? What's next? Every one of these girls love and adore you. And certain ones, certain ones love me. And certain ones have helped me. Mm -hmm. Certain ones have just put me down, made me look like I was nothing but trash. That's not if what I was If we do not hearing. care, we won't be here, Mom. Hello? We care. We're you here. You got me on camera to shame me. Are you serious? Yes. This is help, Mom. Shame me. You are so over, you are in denial. Uh, here, take these, here. I'm, I'm done with this lady. That's right. Bye, drama queen. I really Goodbye. don't know why she attacked me. Um, I'm thinking it's because my father and I live in the same city. And, me, uh, me, me. and he's cut off all communication with her. So the things that she wants to say to him, she says them to me and it hurts. It really does.
How else would this have happened if you didn't have this crew here? Someone reaching out to help you. That's good. I really appreciate it, but I won't be at the fault for all this stuff. But you're angry with her for bringing all this help. No, bring the truth out, but don't put the blame all on me. Everybody around here in the community, they know what kind of man her father is. Well, I'm not hearing that Jim is perfect. I'm not hearing any of that. I'm hearing that this was a process well, I'll that tell him if he if, if he's uh, at the fault of some of this, how come he ain't on camera? I don't how know. How come I'm the only one on camera? How come it's not Jim and Claudia? Jim wasn't here. Oh, Jim ran away. He That's couldn't right. take it. He ran away. That's right. He left me in a big bind. That's All right. this mess. Tell me. And he, he needs to be seen, and we need to ask him, how do we feel about a certain thing? Yes, okay, if you if you want to leave my mom, that's fine. But tell us the <laughs> truth. Look us in our face. Tell us it's over with. Don't, don't hold back. I'm done. I'm ready to see him right now, because I'm ready to tell him. Courting has destroyed your family, Mama. I'm just going to tell you the truth. It has destroyed your family. This is it's not home. my fault. No, I'm not going to take your responsibility. My husband is a tramp. He drug in most of this stuff up in here. We had a situation today where the children of Claudia and Jim wanted to get together and express their feelings. The issues that came out uh, were also around dad packing up and leaving and abandoning mom in this situation. So my dad need to come forth and tell the truth how he feel. If he's planning on going, then he can get out of this damn, this family. That's how I feel. having a tough time and they need their dad okay and I need you to listen to what they say and, and I, I got to prepare you it's not going to be easy but your family needs to talk to you and share how they feel okay are you willing to hear this Shoot. okay all right we just been going through it and I want to know you know is you planning on being around here to help out with this house is you and her planning on moving forward you know I'm not trying to put you on the spot but I think that it needs to be addressed because after these people are gone what's next we're going to straighten up this house. He is. Are you going to stay with her? That's really what you're asking, yeah. Yeah. right? She can't take care of this house alone. The two of you can take care of this house. Right. But she can't do it alone. She has no money. She has no income. Right. But I have some issues I have to address back in mm -hmm. Vegas, you see. Are those issues more I... important than being here with your wife? No, she's the greatest thing in my life. That's right. See. But. Things have to be put on the back burner for a minute, anyhow. So what does she do when you go back to Vegas? Where, she, where does she well, we live? How does she? Let the Lord work it out. And all you have to do is ask. So, so the Lord will bring money for the bills. The Lord will He'll bring a, he food and shelter for her. He will make a way. Well, what Mama is concerned about, she want to know: Are you still going forward with the divorce or not? Are, are you gonna? Just stop it, and are you willing to get back with her, or do y'all need to just sell the house and she get a smaller place to stay, or relocate, or? Never planned on selling. I'm crazy about this place. Hopefully, I could live here. You know, it seems like I could. It's getting cleaned up mm -hmm. and everything, and that really sparks me to mm -hmm. really come back and really keep it up. But like I say, I have to go and tend to business. You know, what kind of business? Well, <laughs> I like to read. I got books you see you know. and, and you want to go back to Vegas because you have some books to read is what you said yes. okay. I'm gonna be a herbologist I forgot to tell you that what herbologist you know what that is you're in school yes okay he's in I'm school I'm gonna be that okay <laughs> after my father had um, came in on our conversation I feel like he's pretty not straightforward with you know what he's wanting to do and he's still leaving it up for grabs which is not cool. Jim do you think it might be more important 
to be here with your wife and take yes, care of the home it's, it's, than it's, to read books. Do, what reading books that you could do here and be here with your wife and take care of the family. I'm a guy that likes hot weather. <laughs> if my father doesn't come back, I feel like me and my sisters probably be still stuck with the responsibilities of my mother. This, the stuff that we keep circling around with is clearly the issues in this family that ha are, have gone year after year. As you said, they haven't been talked about. None of them have been resolved. We are not going to resolve them this weekend. So I think everybody now knows how everybody feels. It's out on the table. Yeah. And at this point, everybody's going to have to decide how, what role they are going to have in going forward. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Dealing with a lot, but you're moving forward with the process, and I think we're going to get your home completely cleared today. If you if you think that you can still go on and move forward, and we can go on to the second floor and and yeah. do what we did, you, you think you can move yes. on? Of we course. Need to finalize. We finalize, right? We need to get to the end. Yes. Oh, more pictures? Yeah. yeah, look at me, look at me. Ah, this is me in the third grade. Okay, so we'll put all these into, did we all not have the ponytails? Ah, fourth, third, yeah, we all had the apple poofs. <laughs> just opened up and let me know that she really appreciated me and I haven't heard those words from her in quite a, quite some time. Oh, I love you so much. Baby. I love you too. <laughs> guest rooms like for us. <laughs> That's what good. I think. That sounds good. Now since everything is cleaned out, it looks wonderful. I might even want to spend the night tonight. <laughs> yeah. I'm impressed. This is yeah, wonderful. Within. It's a phenomenal. <laughs> the process was very emotional, very tough. It was hard on all of us. Tempers, letting go. It was a lot, but you know, we got through it. But By the end of cleanup, we got this house completely cleared. We were able to fill over 10 trucks and 22,000 pounds of stuff left this house. This is... It was so easy for me to let go of things because I really found out that it wasn't good to have around, very bad for my health, also my grands and my kids, if they would like to come over and visit, spend some time. Claudie is a compulsive hoarder. This situation was very unusual that she could pretty much with no anxiety throw these items out. The fact that Claudie was able to purge items so easily really places her at high risk to continue to hoard. And if she doesn't get proper aftercare therapy, it places her at even higher risk. I'll have to go back to Vegas. 
take care of some business. Shake a few hands. Adios. Like that. But it's going to take 15 minutes. I can't do it in a minute. I can't do it in five. It's going to take 15. He says he's going to be gone and come back in about two, three months, which um, I'm not really looking forward to that because uh, he's speaking in an uh, iffy tone of voice. But if he comes back, I'll welcome him back. If it's to be, it'll be. What'd you think? I hope you enjoyed today's marathon and thank you so much for watching. And yes, we are at the end of our marathon today, but don't worry, you can watch more Hoarders episodes this month, every Sunday morning, starting at 7 a.m. Eastern Time on A&E. See you later.